Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and Chogall champions to the Nations Cup here in Berlin 2023. My name is Bahamut, and I am lucky to join Kaldor here Bald for Brothers another... are back. <laughs> Bald Brothers are back. I you know what? I should just introduce us that way. The Bald Boys are here, and we're ready to bring you another best of five here in the lower bracket. We've got North America versus Sweden, and I want to get a temperature check from you, Calder. How are you feeling about this matchup? I'm super excited for it, also because the this is a rematch, so the game yeah. happened in the winner bracket, and back then Sweden took it with a 3-2. I actually talked to Kyo a bit about it, and I said, you guys are terrifying. You always fall behind, but you stay cool, calm, collected, and you turn it around. In that particular instance, they lost the fifth map, but they're like, that was the plan, but we kind of screwed it up a little bit on the final one. So I want to see what they can do here. And so far, my games have been pretty straightforward. I made the mistake of casting too many of the German games. So I want to have a five map. Uh, let's okay. go, boys. I'm here for the action. Well, I went to breakfast with the the North American players. I was able to to walk with them and come to the venue and all that kind of stuff. And kind of the the feeling from them is mm -hmm. they really wanted to beat Korea. Not not to beat Korea, but they wanted this. They wanted this yeah. rematch. They want to prove that they are the better team because they feel and it sounds like they know they're the better team. Well, so far they've lost, and uh, we'll see if they can now turn it around. I certainly hope for a five mapper, but they have a lot of confidence, and they should have because they are insanely strong. That game in the winner bracket could have gone either way, as you see here. It was a two, three. A lot of those matches, super, super close. So it's going to be a bit of a banger. S Sweden was pretty confident too, so they felt all right. They're prepared. They've been scrimming a little bit. They had some warm up ARAM, so. They're looking good here. Obviously, for the NA boys, it's also maybe a bit of an issue that you're on stage this much. I mean, now it's the second game in a row. It's not that big of a deal. But there are yet. nerves around this. You are correct in that. And think about if you're going, let's say, let's say they take it here and they go to the grand final, then you're literally playing the entire day, more or less. So of course, you have short breaks where you can grab some food, but it still drains you it's, to oh, be on yeah. stage the entire time. The lights are on. On the other hand, that's the problem if you drop down into the loser's bracket. Mm -hmm. That's one of the big incentives to make it through the winner bracket and will give the team that moves through the winner bracket an advantage. And what is that advantage for the... Well, we know it's Germany is going to be in the grand yeah. finals. What advantage will they have in that best of seven grand Maps final? Maps first, uh, map pick, first pick. But the big one, in my personal opinion, is simply you play less matches, you yes. are more relaxed, and you can also check what your opponent is doing the entire time. More research, look at those games. No way it's going to hide strategies in the loser's bracket when there's like an intense match. So you can really look at it as like, okay, if this is something that faces us, how do we deal with it? Can we deal with it? Do we have to ban it out? And that is going to be pretty interesting. It's a very good point. We are getting ready for our first map in this best of five, and it is going to be Towers of Doom. This is, <laughs> this is usually, I like to see Towers of Doom towards the end of a series, but kicking things off with Towers of Doom, this is fun. I like this. This is usually the Germany special. Whenever yeah, they get yeah. a chance, they're trying to grab that. But yeah, the Swedes should be pretty comfortable here too. It's actually fairly interesting to me because I talked a little bit with uh, Cure and also with Legacy about just the format in general. And at some point, they were like, oh, yeah, it's wild with the 10 heroes that are being banned. I was like, wild? We had Meta Madness with 22 pre-banned, right? So then I thought, okay, yeah, we never really had that played out in North America. So I mm -hmm. talked with them a bit about it, and they said, yeah, for us, it's really new. It's really cool. It's a lot of fun. But at the same time, we really can tell that other teams, other players that participate here from the European side have played this format in the past in different variations. Because when it comes to map number four, map number five, they have some strategies like down right? the road yeah. that, they, that they have in mind, and uh, we are just not there yet. So that was super interesting to me since I haven't considered that before. It, it's even too, like I, I cast so much of anything I can get my hands on for Heroes of Storm. So when players were like, yeah, the Meta Madness stuff, it's a little weird. I'm like, what do you mean? It's pretty normal. It's just heroes get picked, heroes not played in the future. It's very simple. But of course, that is how it works. And Calder, why do we have a bunch of pre-bands at the bottom of the screen? Well, so pre-bans, everybody that you see down at the bottom of the screen cannot be picked in the entire playoff day on Sunday. We changed a little bit, so we made the format a bit more flexible here, but every single hero that you see at the bottom of your screen right now is not pickable for the playoffs until we hit the grand final. And at the grand final, there will be additional bans all tied to the crowdfunding here. We have, of course, now here in the loser's bracket, 
the United States against Sweden, the rematch. Last time around, it was Sweden that took the victory in the winner bracket with a 3-2. But yeah, the USA, as you just pointed out, they want to have revenge. They're hungry for it. And I don't have a ton of secrets to share, but the big thing that, and I think this is pretty obvious, <laughs> they want to get rid of Garage Zarya. That that Garage Zarya for Sweden is so yeah. devastating, and I can't blame them. It, it it works really well. It's it's almost like a guaranteed map win for Sweden when they get it. Absolutely. I talked a lot about this yesterday, and also earlier today with Tim with Trixler, and. It was so funny to me because Germany, they dealt with it. They were the only team, I believe, yeah. that took a victory there. But I already called that at some point a team will come in and say, we are getting rid of one of them. Yeah. Either we pick one of them so they can't pick it or we ban something out. And to see the US come in and the first th thing that they do is ban Garrosh and shut that down, I absolutely love it. That's great. This does mean with the bans uh, bands that we're seeing on the top of our screen, Urel is available if Liam wants to jump on yeah. that immediately. Fantastic. Fantastic for Towers of Doom, good for double soak rotations, control around the objectives, and even control in the 1v1 for the solo laners. And obviously, Urel just being a fantastic solo laner herself, not only in the hands of Liam, if you don't take her now, there's a very good chance that Sweden locks her in for themselves, mm -hmm. also to deny it. So, unaverted, there it is. Immediately, we get the Urel pick. I love it. It's a good start for the United States, but that gives a Tyrael Tracer, the European special, I think. Yeah, especially the Germans, they really love to play that. French Dino do it really Tracer. well too. Yeah, exactly. And Masquerade, Nick, mm -hmm. all playing a lot of Tyrael here, Lauber now on the hero too. So it's going to get absolutely wild. I, I love this already. And I really hope that we're going to get another five mapper from these two teams because the first series that happened in the winner bracket was just spectacular. Oh my god, I'm still I'm still reeling from it yesterday. It was just so much so much was put on the line. They put everything out there, but I got to say, wow, United States they're they're booming their way through this one. This explosive draft with the Sergeant Hammer coming through. Good delay around the shrines at level 20, if I'm not mistaken, with the Napalm Strike upgrade, you have nearly infinite delay around the objective with the duration on the ground. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And well, US tanks hitting uh, European shores, Sweden has to be oh. careful here. Mm. White main in as well, and yeah, Meriden gets bad. I mean, they're, ha they're targeting the front line like crazy now. Obviously, they already have Tyrael, but Garrosh already out. You have Meriden, Diablo, both annihilated. Then another good hero for this map would, of course, be on side lane, Dehaka. There's so many frontliners that are usually beefy and really contribute to that meat shield at the front that are now not available. And this is game one. I know. It's game one, and the tactics are already out. There's there's no hiding anything. It's we're going to shut down things we don't like, and we're going to grab things we know can win. I was wondering what this pick was going to be. I was curious, maybe a Malfurion, so synergistic with the Tracer, but Junkrat is so annoying, especially against Sergeant Hammer. Forcing that level four talent for the self-cleansing on Sergeant Hammer if it's picked up. You should, a lot of Sergeant Hammers go regenerative biosteel, but there yep. is the self-cleanse E on Hammer at level four, and Junkrat does force that out of her a lot causing maybe Trace to be able to dive in. Good heads up ban from United States. That was a really interesting thing with the regenerative biosteel because Nick brought that in as a build on the European side and up to that point it was always siege tactics on level four and he always, I don't want to say reinvents, but he really looks at heroes that he wants to play, puts a bit of a different twist on it. And if it works, then you have yeah. tons and tons of players starting to emulate that. The aggressive Tyrael build that we see with the Art and Restoration level 1, then the option to go into Judgment later on is something that he pioneered. I believe it was at the Masters Clash, and mm. then uh, it just made its way into more and more teams. And it's just so cool to see that, that an old hero gets a bit of a new twist when a player can really show, okay, this is kind of working. Well, it was a lot like Sylvanas with Mind Control. For the longest time, it was only Wailing Arrow, only Wailing Arrow. And then there were some tournaments, and Mind Control got consistent wins and value. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute, this is pretty good. And then Call of the Dark Lady at level 20. It's like a 14 second or a 15 second cooldown with all those reductions. And you also mitigate vision as well from the target. Really good pickup. But... We're talking about pickups here. We have a full draft in front of us, and the aggression and control from the United States is very good, but aggression and blow up from Sweden is, I gotta say, terrifying with that last pick, Chromie. And not only the Chromie, we have really the Holy Trinity the, uh, for Tracer. She has the Malfurion yep. at her side, which you already pointed out earlier, and now Tyrael, so there's shields, there's overheal that you have, and you can really go deep as a Chromie player, and you know there's a lot of safety, uh, sorry, as a Tracer player. Mm -hmm. And then from behind, that creates more space for Chromie, so she chips in a lot of damage too. It is a bit on the squishy side, so you have to make sure that you're the one that initiates and you want to be the one calling the shots in the game, but it is incredibly dangerous.
This is going to be... This is going to be an amazing map, number one. I hope you're all excited about it. We're loading into Towers of Doom for this best of five series in the loser bracket. As a reminder, loser of the series goes home in third place. Winner will be going up against Germany in the grand finals. That's a best of seven as well, and it's unweighted. We're going to potentially see seven maps after these five maps. It would be these absolutely five, amazing. These five. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm not disagreeing with you in the yeah. finals. There's going to be a five map. I'm putting it in the universe. I'm like, <laughs> I want all the games today. I know the players are going to be tired, but still, let's get 12 maps in total. And we're here into Towers of Doom on the left-hand side. The blue team, Legacy, playing white main. Liam on his Urel. Madara will be on that Sylvanas, unaverted burrowing under the ground, playing a new Breck. And last but not least, we've got Sergeant Hammer, controlled by Cure. And over to the right side, we have for Sweden, heading on Malfurion, Svamgrotta with Leoric, Lauba on Tyrael, Skok on Tracer, and Gia is playing Gromi for the red team as the Swedes are hoping to repeat the result of the winner bracket. I feel like I heard the crowd get a lot louder for Sweden. And I gotta say, NA, I, I wanna hear you cheer for your boys as Unaverted is gonna get poked in the rotation, but no early kill to the side of Sweden. Yeah, Lauba, of course, dancing around now immediately with Trace and with Malfur. And we talked about these three heroes in particular. Beetle build starting us off for Unaverted over here. We have also the Ardent Restoration for Tyrael. So the builds that we've been highlighting during the draft are already coming through here. This is an interesting start. A 1-1-3 one, one, from USA. Unless they're going to rotate this out, Sylvanas and Urel going to kind of do a double soak, double duty between top and mid? Yeah, Tracer already dancing around here. Liam has to be a little bit careful. He's already losing quite a lot and gets drained now too. So Skog is doing his best to keep both of the boys in blue here quite low. Whereas down to the bottom of the map, Chromie is the one trying to deal with a Sergeant Hammer, which is, of course, going to be a theme throughout the game. Yeah. You have Cure on Sergeant Hammer, so he is going to try and siege up, get in a good position around all of those shrines and altars. And with that, we will have Chromie trying to target him specifically to force him back, force him out of that siege mode and try to limit the damage numbers that he can get. Gunpowder artillery versus sand artillery. We're going to see which one's stronger here on Towers of Doom. Well, if Naruto is any indication, it's definitely going to be the Gara style that we're getting from Chromie there, so one can hope. Okay, all right. Well, I didn't realize that you were that big of a fan of Naruto. I, I watch quite a fair amount of anime. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to talk later about favorite animes when we're off this game because it still is Madara hanging on top. So it is gonna be a 1-1-3, one, one, looking to pressure the bottom lane with that Sergeant Hammer. But as you mentioned, Chromie and Sergeant Hammer will be the motif of this back and forth as the fight does break out in bottom lane around the Sapper defense. Topside, one of the big advantages obviously for the NA team that we haven't really highlighted too much just yet. I mean, we touched upon some of her abilities, but Sylvanas after a fight that is won can really help you to take control of these bell towers. And on a map that has so much late game potential to just flip the switch and turn the game around with a big comeback, that is, is such an important ability to have. So she might accelerate the late game in favor of the United States if it ever comes to that. Top lane Sapper Camp will be grabbed early as well for United States with the help of Sylvanas. And easy, yeah. Pressure into top lane added in with those Sappers. Also interesting, we, <laughs> we talked to a couple of the players a bit earlier and we said like, boys, come on, you can't ride a pleb horse here, this is just not okay. Don't you have like a unique mount, maybe something epic, something that you can like bring to the table? And they actually switched it, so <laughs> we had the loadout completely switched from some of them, which I really appreciate. But yeah, fantastic mount choice, the big lizard. You gotta keep it spicy, you don't wanna just use the base, that's just boring. Yeah. Unaverted will step forward. Save with the sprays. The spray yes, game course. has to be on point. Of course, you do have to have your spray game on, on point. The triple altar phase starts out here. Top left and right will be traded out between Urel and Leoric. Legacy gets the channel on bottom. Eight shots go into oh. the side of Sweden. Cure tried to back away. The pulse bomb does not confirm the kill, but Tracer still has the same damage. Anubrak, can he block the di- No! First blood goes to Sweden. Sweden with the first blood. They want to go for Legacy, but they cannot take him down. But still a nice first kill for Sweden as they take down Sergeant Hammer. Really working for that one too. But as we could see, it was Tyrael coming in from the top, so very little chance for Cure to survive there, even if he would have been able to dodge out on Tracer's damage. Still have the Sylvanas in top lane, being able to... Is she just... Is she Hearthen? No, yeah, she actually is Hearthing at a top lane. 
will join to the team in bottom, and I think this is where we do see Urel break off into that double soak duty. Hard pressure should be initiated in bottom. I love Anubrak spawning beetles, tanking tower shots. Sergeant Hammer now has Hover Siege, which allows her to get closer and maneuver around a little bit easier, slowly working up those lanes. But of course, the main point of this map, the true objective, bottom lane sapper camps. Exactly. So you're trying to apply pressure. You want to convert that bell tower over as quickly as possible. And players are always very interested to invade the opponent's camp if they see an opportunity there. Siege tactics for Sergeant Hammer, of course, up on level 4. So that's going to help quite a bit, especially with Chromie now picking up the temporal loop. So he can always bait some of the cooldowns out in these fights. And it's already starting right here. Madara gets saved. But the attack continues, intercession used by Legacy, and he is the target all of a sudden, trying to get away here. They're switching targets over to Unaverted, but both of the Americans are able to move past the gate and save themselves. Beautiful job splitting the damage between players from USA. Unfortunately, Sweden not able to confirm another kill, but they do force the double hearth out. Maybe finding a window? Nah, I thought they might try and push up a little bit further. Single altar is spawned. Missed that one right there. Sko gets the channel uninterrupted by Cure. And we find parity on the map here, Kaldor. 32 to 32. Uh, also an experience. Not that much of a gap. Mm -hmm. A slight advantage for the blue team, but nothing of significance, really. Top side, though. <laughs> and Laura coming in here. He actually sees it. He continues the camp. They're fully aware that Liam is at the side. I mean, who else would have damaged those pumpkins? But as long as there's not a rotation coming, they are going to get this eventually. The good thing for the Americans is that he can buy them time. So Liam is... Dead. Yeah? But they trade Malfurion in the mid lane, or bottom lane, excuse me. I'm still a little bit surprised they didn't even try to get away here. So he was just trying to waste as much of their time as possible so that they could go into the middle of the map and take some of these towers down. The trade instructors, I'm absolutely on board with it, but I honestly expected him to at some point at least try to get out and see if he can escape. Sometimes you just gotta sacrifice yourself for the greater good. And now... The sacrificial goat. Quite literally. Oh, I, we perfectly lined up right there. A little bit of damage onto the bottom lane fort for the time being. Tracer works on the top, and it's a Judgment Tyrael at level 10. Oh, yeah. I'm and also, about that. Yeah. Oh. EFT for Sergeant Hammer, and we get Judgment. Well, Furion not making a choice yet either. Mm. So let's see how deep they're going to go with this, how aggressive. There's already Judgment, and Beautiful. goodbye. Tracer with the kill. Kill number three for Sweden as they take down Silvana. Urel back into top lane, soaking up Temporal Loop, mitigated by the level 4 of Sergeant Hammer. No intercession needed from White Mane there. Yeah, those are those cooldown, tra cooldown traits that we talked before earlier. I really like Judgment, by the way. It was always a super fun ability, yeah. but for such a long duration, nobody could really make it work, and it was just really tricky. But when you have that in your arsenal, it just allows you to force fights continuously in the mid and late game, but in these early rotations, of course, the gank potential increases so substantially that you are bound to pick up a couple of kills. USA and Sweden delaying each other out, but Unaverted is going to be the target of a lot of damage. Chromie goes down in the bottom of our in the bottom objective area, and a new brack is traded. I still think we'll see traded kills and traded objective phases. Definitely looks like it. Four shots already fired against Sweden. They have taken the altar in the middle, though, so we still have them tied on core points. Even in experience, I mean, yeah, there is that gap in kills, but it doesn't translate into an experience lead for Sweden just yet. Just yet. Early game kills. Oh, the Entomb went fishing for Madara, but no fish in the basket. Yeah, you got all the pumpkins, though. Oh, that's awful. Go fishing and you pull up a pumpkin? What kind of lake are you in? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sapper camps once again for the bottom lane. Boss up and available, but not going to be looked at for either side. Not till we get to the later game when it's really contested for final shots or maybe getting someone down to about four less HP as the dive into mid. They're going for it again. Ult already used by Urel, the Space Goat, on her way out. They're shifting targets towards Unaverted. And the oh. Beetle nearly died, but it's Lauber that's low. And Liam, he wants a bit more of the action here. All of them are so insanely low. And here comes the Cocoon on Tracer. As Anubarak realizes that it would be a really bad idea to let her reign ah. supreme. But what a beautiful lined up BFG. And Lauber is now down to great play by the Americans, able to lock in two kills as Sweden. Sweden overextends just a little bit and doesn't see the rotation from the bot lane coming. Small little positive for Lauber. Got a double hit 
with his explosion getting 10% off per enemy hero hit. So his death timer is actually less than Tracer, spawning right around her. So getting back into the lane a little bit faster as the objective phase spawns in 21 seconds. Everyone's going to be up. But this is left and right, Kaldor. Typically, these are just traded. I don't expect any sort of major... Well, actually... Judgment's about to be up. Maybe we do get a major dive and steal onto the left-hand side from Sweden. I feel like that aggression from them is very key. I mean, you're right. Top left, top right is usually an equal exchange. Depends a bit on how if you can Ooh. get kills beforehand. And talking about those kills, Leo is down. Trace is still sipping around. Judgment, nicely done by Legacy. But the problem is that Liam doesn't make it as Trace just shuts Urel down. And once again, this is why Korea in so many games banned out Tracer previously against European teams. This is working really well for Sweden right now. A lot of value from them. And here comes the exchange. Top right has been taken. And we are still looking at a game that is perfectly tied in core points. Sylvanas already back in bottom lane, pushing things up, looking to whittle down or actually just work up the lane. She's sitting in the bush. Madara waiting to jump onto someone here. Wailing Arrow, 47 seconds away. BFG and Cocoon are up and available. Tracer's got her Pulse Bomb up as well, and she did go for the Sticky Bomb upgrade. 50% radius increase as a 70% slow is also added. Half a level of lead now for the blue team. Some small traps here that Sweden is trying to lay. Nothing of any significance yet, but at the top they are trying to go for Yorel. And Tracer is, of course, immediately there. Any kind of damage that can be done here, if they can force the ult out, would be fantastic. If they can just force Liam to tap the fountain, then it gives Swam Grotta at least the upper hand in the 1v1 on lane. So these small rotations from Tracer are worth a lot for them. Time trap in the bush. We'll see if it's going to be activated. Tyrael jumps in, looking at Kira Nubarak. Lands a burrow. There's the judgment on Dakira, but he has the self cleanse boosting away on Sergeant Hammer. Cocoon dropped on Tracer. It looks like a full disengage from USA. Absolutely. They are disengaging here. They're retreating immediately. But you can tell that they are also fully aware that with judgment and all of the abilities coming from Sweden, they need to be very careful with these cleanse abilities. Beautiful dodge on the BFG. And Lauba is able to get out. He was isolated by the old of Sergeant Hammer and still had the mobility to get away before they could take him down. Triple Altar phase up next. I, mm. 16 Talents here is closer for North America, and maybe they can be aggressive with that and get most of the Bell Tower shots, but the aggression is coming out from Sweden as they invade this camp. Ural jumps over the wall. Huge Righteous Hammer. Lobber so very low. Can he get away? Swap Grata will die on the left-hand side of her screen. The camp goes over to USA. We've got Lobber dip-diving and dodging around with the... Sort of justice, but Yorel will find the double kill. A little bit greedy here for Sweden. They dove in because they wanted to fight before level 16, but they lost two, and now they're going to lose a lot more. At least top right, one altar gets channeled, but the United States are in the lead now. Not only in experience, taking an entire an level team. over Sweden, but also on the core. And bottom Bell Towers now. Bottom lane gets converted. They don't get the extra shots. 20 to 16 in core HP, favoring USA. But this is Towers of Doom. It's anyone's game still, as the camp is stolen away. The bottom lane hold is from USA. Can they feed these three sappers in for an additional three points of damage? Yeah, seven kills to five now. And of course, with 16 talents in their hand, Sweden at least has been able to get onto the same talent here. But they need a bit of a victory. Level 20 abilities are also going to be quite curious. With Leo, it's always a game changer. If you land that in Tomb on 20, it's going to be fantastic. Still going to be some time until we see Storm Talents. But up to then, Hope will continue. And they will re try to retake that belt out. But look at the damage on the nice. Roman, but done. What a nice BFG there from Cure. Perfectly lining it up on Tracer. And that is a kill. Cocoon to stop Gia from getting the burst damage out onto the enemy or onto the allies. And a huge turnaround in that moment. Righteous Hammer bops back the enemies. And. No sappers over the wall. Still, good aggression, good kill for NA as it's 8 to 5 in kills. Seven, 18 to 16. Yeah, it's looking really good for them now. More than a level ahead, a little bit ahead on uh, core points, but it's the momentum in the game that really matters the most. Now, in the middle, it seems like we have Sweden just trying to attack a bit, get some experience, wait for everything, everybody to be back up before they go down to the bottom of the map to recapture the bell tower. But the next altar is spawning in 15 seconds, and it spawns at the bot side, which means there is very little 
access for Sweden. They have lost both mm -hmm. of these bell towers at the bot lane, so this should be a total freebie for the blue team. Consolation prize time. It's going to be to grab this top lane bell tower, convert it over, maybe try and deny. Oh, yeah, they'll easily be able to deny shots. But while that's happening, North America says, we've got white main in bottom lane. We've got Sylvanas. We've got Black Arrows. Let's shred through this mid lane. I don't know how quickly they can shred as they back away immediately. I like the respect to Sweden. White main gets the channel. 20 to 12 in core HP. USA pulling ahead here on map number one in this best of five in the lower bracket. And they obviously also know that they can just play this a bit slower. They have the leading experience, so getting to 21st would help them to maybe go for another bell tower, go for the boss, just lock in another objective. Chromie, bit of the exception here. So she's now going into uh, the upgrade at level 10, which is going to put more and more pressure on the level 4 Talon Sergeant Hammer and also intercession for White Man. Madara gets to top lane just in time and will deny these sappers getting over. There was one sapper with a toe starting to touch that line <laughs> in the death zone. But Leo will not be able to push those in. Back in bottom lane, Kaldor, three more sappers that Gia is working on. Yeah, they're also trying to use Chromie now to put some damage onto the bell tower itself. Half a level for the United States to get level 20 in the middle of the map. More experience gathered by Sylvanas over here. Another camp gets attacked. They're still trying to fight this one. Madara saying hello, but everybody is starting to siege up on that bottom bell tower. And again, time's ticking. Level 20 is going to be there soon. They're trying to fight for this one. And it is again the unstoppable that we're seeing on Sylvanas denying a potential kill. Unaverted, though, is in trouble. He's in real big trouble, but it is Malfurion that falls first. And Unaverted gets away, turns around with another stun. And the United States are just locking in kills, raking the XP, and they have level 20 now. Level 20 and potentially a kill on Delium for the side of Sweden. That's a nice equalizer. Sweden's got to feel good about that one. The next altar spawning in the bottom of the map. Once again, though, it's hard to rotate down here. Yeah, it definitely is, but also they are losing a little bit more ground on Bell Towers. They will probably lose the one at the bot lane here. Not in time, though. Mm -hmm. Already the channel has happened. Four shots fired, which means Sweden is now on single digits. They're lacking the level 20 talent, but getting the counter kill against Urel meant a lot to them. That was really important. But it was also incredible to see how many heroes on the Swedish side were so incredibly low that just anybody, any assassin uh, jumped into their mids could have probably taken another two or three kills there. So they played a very dangerous game, but it paid off for them. Now they have level 20, and this is going to be big. Cooldown reduction on Judgment. You have the silence on Leoric and Tomb. I gotta yeah. say, Scarlet Crusade for Legacy is a big one. Extra yes. healing and a big two-second unstoppable in that area is huge. Ultra Capacitors makes things miserable in sustained fights for Sweden. Both Bell Towers converted during this as well. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to drop it though when you're in two. That's that's true. That's very true. That's very true. Just kill the York before he, he gets an in two mount. Uh, last but not least, of course, Lobber has extended range to super int as well with his uh, the super int. <laughs> the super int upgrade for Lobber. Oh, oh nice. it's good check from Lobber. I don't know who's playing. What's happening here? Lauber? What? He checked the bush. No face check there. Some admin has to go over to the stage and double check that. I don't Whoa. believe it. And Nubarak is down. They dodged the bush and now the party has started with kill after kill. And Nubarak is gone. So is Leoric. He's trying to ghost his way back in here and maybe slow the opponent down a little bit. Double altar spawning. White Mane is getting dropped in hit points here. Legacy still alive and kicking. And we have Liam jumping into the back line on Lauber and getting a kill together with Sergeant Hammer. Nicely done. Next altar phase spawning. I don't, I was gonna say, I don't think United States will be greedy. No, Liam's looking to just delay while leg, while Madara gets the chance. No, Cure's starting to hover over. North America wants to take this map through this objective phase now. Nine seconds on Leork. He will respawn on the battleground and 40 on the Tyrael. Yeah, Tyrael's going to be gone for quite some time. The poke still continues, but if the blue team could lock this one in, this would be big for them. Taking the lead in the best of five would be huge. Sweden still believing that chance to bring this back slowly, and they're starting to channel here with Henning. Cure at the front, trying to see if he maybe can get into range. It's not the case. The altar is gone, but there is still a boss up, and now it's a five versus four because Tyrael is still not back up. The boss was feigned. The boss was a fake, and Leo goes down. Ardent Defender and the Scarlet Crusade.
for United States. They start working on boss in Sweden. They either gotta go for broke or take a map loss. Yeah, that was that was absolutely uh, bone breaking for them. That was <laughs> ruthless. Leo down, the skeleton gone. Here's the boss. They have to throw everything on it, and it's so close. But there it is. The shots are fired, and this is game. Na takes the lead over Sweden in this losers bracket match here at the Nations Cup. Nicely done. That was decisive from North America. I have to say, that boss bait, I was sitting there like, here, stop hitting the boss. What are you doing? Oh, this is smart. And yeah, Leo gets bursted down first map over to United States. They're definitely showing that they're warmed up after that South Korea matchup. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, sometimes it can be an advantage being on stage for a little bit longer. Yep. But as I said, when it's still a long day. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a long day, mm -hmm. especially for the team that makes it to the grand final. Sweden with some really nice moments there, but especially when Tyr was taken down by Liam with Ural, oof, that hurt yeah. them. That hurt them a lot. That forced the five versus four towards the end. And we talked about it in the draft. Ural was left open. They knew that Liam would most likely lock it in immediately. And they said, okay, I think we can deal with it. Maybe it's just the first map. We let that slide. They got punished for it. Good news for them is Ural is out of the, play, uh, the That's hero. That's true. And that's how Trick and I were looking at the last series. Korea got a beautiful draft. They executed super well in map number one. But once some of those really strong heroes faded away, that's when North America pulled ahead. So I wonder yeah. if Sweden, who's done more Meta Madness style of drafting, they kind of have more... They have more ideas. They have more things that they can synergize together and maybe catch NA off guard. Or NA is bloodthirsty and they want that 3-0 because they want to curse you again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think I just have to stop casting Germany. So that, I think you're good on that yeah. one. Uh, but yeah, so the one point is really that I still want to highlight. You could have tried and ban URL and pick them at some point for mm -hmm. yourself. It's always a question of how much you actually value that. They thought, obviously, Sweden, that is, that they could deal with it. But URL getting the pivotal kill there towards the end just highlighted again how impactful Liam is when he has that particular hero. Sweden has a show now that on map number two, they can turn things around a bit. You never want to fall behind 0-2. Then again, reverse sweeps have happened. The US has forced map number five in yep. the winner bracket match, falling behind 0-2 at first. But I already like how the match is shaping up. There's a lot of back and forth action. And I want to say this is basically true for most of the matches that we've seen so far, even the ones that had a very decisive score, some of those games which is incredibly close. And could have oh, absolutely. Even the France versus South Korea, there were some yeah. tight moments in that best of five. It was a 3-0, but still, it was really, really fought back and forth. I think it was a map number two was like Battlefield of Eternity that was nearly 30 minutes, really heavily contested by both teams. A lot of really, really good action here in Nations Cup. If you've missed any of the VODs, you better be sure to watch them. But after, after today, maybe, maybe, you know, grab some snacks tomorrow, lay on the couch, skip work, and just watch all the VODs. We are waiting for our map number two. We're going to find out where we're going to soon. And it is going to be Infernal Shrines, tried and true. Rotations are key. Objective phasing and push potential is the name of the game, though. Yeah, it's so interesting to me now because a lot of the heroes that you immediately jump to when you're thinking about Infernal Shrines are already out. So, Chromie, yeah. Yeah, not only that, you look at the Haka, for example. Sure. He's been oh, the yeah, big yeah. One for Towers of Doom. We saw him a lot yesterday. He's great for shrines. But now, thanks to the pre bans, we have, he's just not part of this anymore. And that hits some of the players pretty hard. So Svankrota, for example, he's an incredible Dehaka oh, player. Oh god, S tier. And this is a hero that he used in the series against North America that they won. And now, that's just a tool that they can't use. It's like the same as if you would say, okay, we already have Ural rebanned, Liam doesn't have a chance to play in one of the games. That's that true. is definitely something that will impact this, and we'll see who adapts to it better. You made a good point, though, because of the format. Uh, when I talked to NA, they really said, hey, we are not that familiar with the format yet. We've played it in the qualifiers. We've played it here. But you can tell some of the European players, they have more experience with it. And when it comes down to a fourth map, a fifth map, or maybe even deeper than that, Ooh. they just have more ideas of what they can do. Exactly. Whereas we have, over the last two days, really had to put quite some thought into this because we haven't found ourselves into that situation all that often. The playbook has not been written yet for NA, but we'll see if they can figure it out. In this Infernal Shrines draft, we're waiting for the readies from the players and we'll get going here. Of course, I gotta bring it up because I gotta bait Trixler a little bit here. I want I'm, to all, that, I'm all in for Trixler, babe. What I want to see about? the Swamp Grotta Murky. Last night at the train station, no joke, the, I rode back with the NA 
players. And I was like, do you, did you think they were going to murk you at any point and during that best of five? And they actually were talking about it. They're like, ooh, I hope Svamgata doesn't murky us. Because they, they weren't banning it or anything like that. They were just like, oh, uh, they were just like, please, please, please don't murky us. Because it is terrifying. It is, we, we joke around, oh, it's murky tee But Svamgata has a notable, terrified, terrifying murky that master, grandmaster players do fear. There was a time in Europe where on certain maps people literally just ban Merc. Yes. Because they're like, even if they don't win, we're not going to deal with this shit. This is not happening. Mm -hmm. So ever since then, people, are t they, ha they think about it. He ha he's not doing it a lot. He's not allowed by the team to do it a lot. And you have to ask yourself, obviously, do they really want to play it? But everybody is to an extent afraid of it. And in the context of so many heroes not available anymore, it becomes even more dangerous. Ooh. And at the point where you think... It's never going to happen. Nah, it's going to bust it out again. It's going to be devastating. And you cast the qualifiers too. There were so many matches where we had later in the stages, Murky and Phoenix for that Octo grab and the Planet, Planet Cracker. Cracker. Yeah. If we're going to map number six later in the grand final and maps number seven, that is definitely an option. Absolutely. I think that's where we get into the weeds. We see the really unique combos of that of that Planet Cracker Octo grab. We could see, I don't know what other synergies these players have put together. Maybe Nova with some sort of anti-armor shells, weakening players. You find some sort of big burst with maybe like a Zara tool that pops up as well. There's so many cool things that we can see unfold. Uh, unfortunately, we had to redo our lobby really quickly, so we're going to get into the game in just a moment. Slight delay, but of course, also, as the games progress, the tanks go down, and we get into more unique heroes, special heroes as they're categorized in the spreadsheet, I've noticed, and those special heroes are Cho'Gal. Yeah, yeah. Not only that, but the tank pool is really whittled down, and I'm not quite sure where exactly we are on uh, the crowdfunding right now. Keep in mind that there is a potential 10th hero to be banned for the best of seven grand final, and that would be a tank. So Anubarak would be removed if Ooh. we reach that threshold. So okay. if you guys want to chip Less in, tanks. help out to also finance more tournaments like this in the future and make the grand final a bit more interesting, you can use exclamation mark bans as a command in Twitch chat. It's going to give you not only the heroes that are banned right now, but also the link on where you can contribute to that. And if Anubarak gets banned, then... Going, I believe, into game number four, we're already running pretty low. So you're talking about Arthur's all of a sudden. Yeah. You, you really have to think, yeah. which kind of sideliner can we play as a main tank? Do we, for example, main tank Imperius again? Ooh. Do we go for the main tank Gazlo? Or what's it going to be? Zul main tank. We get into Uther yeah. main tank. Maev main tank. Murky main tank. Technically, Absolutely. I mean, it, it, in the weeds, Murky main tank does, does kind of work, but it's a bit of a stretch. The best of seven could get absolutely wild. In, I really uh, hope it does. The actual meta madness we had some games where I believe it was Shogal and a couple of supports against Vikings and I, I can't remember, like ridiculous stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. Just look at it, it's like, oh my God, like what's happening here? You queued into quick match all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It looks like an ARAM, looks worse, honestly. So it was just stellar. And you're like, okay, if they get into the late game, then I get it. They're going to absolutely destroy, but the opponent's trying to just run them over here. Another hero that really spikes a bit in priority after a couple of games is Suljin. Zuljin oh gosh, can have we even seen Zuljin? A this huge problem. I mean, right now we haven't seen him yet in the playoffs. In the qualifiers, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. But this tournament, I mean, here in, in no. Berlin, we haven't even had a Zuljin game. No, not that I know of. But if the game goes long and a lot of... There's a couple of majors that have started to pop up a little bit higher in priority that we haven't really seen uh, in the qualifiers as much. I highlighted Li Ming previously. Mm -hmm. So that, of course, replaces or maybe pushes Zuljin a little bit lower down. But he's been... I don't want to say constant, but it's been a semi-regular pick in this draft format for Battlefield of Eternity, for example. Okay, that's true. So something where he can be played, and I could totally see that become an option for the next series or the one after. I do love this heads-up ban on the Mephisto. Uh, Infernal Shrines, a great map for Mephisto. We saw Alex Straza earlier as well can synergize into him for that level 4 spite. And overall, his dip-diving and poking is just fantastic here, and Alex Straza Dragon Queen is a fun time. Yeah, the double transformation that we oftentimes saw in the days of HGC from NA that they really like here. Yeah, you go Tigers, you go Odin, you have Alexstrasza, Dragon Queen, you really play around those cooldowns and you can do so much on any objective. If your opponent normally wants to try and get a hero killed before the shrine even spawns, but if you don't get the perfect angle, then it's going to be really tough for you to push into position on an objective. I really love the idea for either of these teams to lean into that tried and true, it's, maybe it's not tried and true, but the aggressive triple pick of 
Kerrigan, Uther, and Ana. I really like that. It's an old comp that was run a lot on this map because of the chain CCs, the burst ability, the healing denial, and just Uther constantly stunning you. Usually you go uh, Hammer of Light at level 1 for the cooldown reduction off your autos as well. But Diablo, Hogger, Medivh, and Mephisto band away. We start out with a Hanzo. With the double supports, there's also some really fun ones when uh, Uther was oftentimes played as the main tank. When you go into a format where so many heroes are just gone, you can bust out some combos that normally don't really make a whole lot of sense. Like, for example, you get Malthael in, you have Tormented Souls, you go, uh, you put Nana boost? boost on him, yeah. and the Divine Shield, and he just destroys everything on the shrine. Can't probably go play out. Liam. <laughs> re re really depends on what exactly is still available, but every time you see it, it's just so amazing. So I want to see what's going on around that. And this is what we talked about in the first draft. Draft number one, they ban out Garrosh. Yep. Draft number two, they pick him for themselves. And they're saying, all right, we pick Garrosh. You don't have Garrosh Zarya anymore. So we already destroyed one of the tools in your tool belt. They told me this at breakfast. They're like, we're taking this from yeah, Sweden. Absolutely. We do not want Sweden to get it because that Garrosh Zarya is so hard to deal with. But there's the Uther Kerrigan for Sweden coming out saying, we want that aggression. We want to beat you up. And that Garrosh is pff, whatever. Yeah, Kerrigan, very, very strong in that comp, of course, and especially on this map. So I like what both teams are doing with the draft, but it doesn't surprise me at all how NA deals with Garrosh. Game number one, you don't want to play him, you have a different priority, you are making sure that he can't be played with Zarya. Game number two, all right, here it fits a little bit better what we're trying to do, it fits better for the map. We take Garrosh, they don't have access to that comp anymore. So far, only Germany has been able to beat it. And even that was a close call. So I really like the opening uh, from NA here. Tychus, we talked about Odin, super powerful here. We'll also get a Deathwing ban, a Varian ban. We get back over to the United States for our latter half of the draft. Up against Hanzo Uther Kerrigan, what are you going to start leaning into? Still need a solo lane, still need some extra damage, maybe a mage, and also, of course, a healer. I'm really interested in healer choices. We have so many of them banned out already, mm -hmm. four in total. And then you have a Kerrigan against you, so you have to be super careful here. Uther with a Divine Shield option. Occasionally we see the Divine Storm. In this oh, case, like you this. want to empower her. But we get Deckard Kane, and we have a Diva for Liam. That's great for Shrine Control, but also really good to create some space and make sure that your opponent cannot coordinate the attacks like they would like to. And we can have some fun with Garrosh tossing the Diva mech around. I'm not sure if that's actually going to happen, but in theory, it's always kind of fun. It's always it's, it's fun to think about. Also, Kerrigan, she can accidentally pull it in with Ravage, too, if it's if it's placed in certain spots. I would love it if it happens, but intentionally making that one work Let me is dream, often, Caldor. Very, Let very me tricky. dream. No, no. <laughs> you, you, go, you go and dream on. If it happens, I'm a fan. They can pull it off. Muradin, Chen. So once again, not only a stun, but in addition to that, we also have Chen for that chaos factor mm -hmm. with Barrel. I don't see them go for pandas here. And so many stuns now. I yes. mean, first of all, you have Fat Illidan that slows you down. When Chen jumps in, feed first. You have Murder with stuns, Kerrigan with stuns, the arrow from Hanzo, Uther with another one. Mm -hmm. That's a CC train that is insanely difficult to beat. So that could get tough. Last pick, Zarya is going to be really useful, though, for the United States. I yeah. like the, the speed barrier for Garrosh, cleansing, uh, cleansing shields as well. Also, Expulsion Zone for these dive moments. Everyone starts coming in on that one target. You Expulsion Zone them away. I don't think we see a Graviton Surge sort of synergy. There's nothing to play off of that overall. Great draft from both sides. We're loading into Infernal Shrines, map number two in this best of five in the lower bracket. And if NA can pull this off, they're on the precipice of moving into that Grand Finals. But of course, Sweden, they're not a team to laugh at. This is definitely a team that I think can take the map because as you mentioned, they've got beautiful CC, Awesome draft. Lobber's got his Muradin. And as Lobber says on his stream, boys, I get level 13. I get my bronze beard rage. We win this. Okay. Uh, That's I'll what he you. says. That's what he says. It's a great talent. Yeah, the problem is Lobber says a lot of things. <laughs> he also That's says. true. That is true. I just believe certain things that he says. Makes sense to me. <laughs> but yeah, so no, Lauba is actually... So far, he hasn't died in the first minute in the tournament at all. Like, I don't know what to say here. Like, He's was, a new man. Yeah, he hasn't Lauba so far, and that makes me a little bit suspicious. But again, we're jumping, of course, into our second game. NA has taken a lead, and we see them spawn over to the left side of the map. Cure playing Zarya, Madara on the Tychus, unaverted, throwing people around with Garrosh, Diva piloted by Liam, and Legacy, as always, will be telling us a beautiful story here on Deckard Kane. 
Over to the right side, Sweden with Swam Grotta on Chen Lauber playing Muradin. We've got Skok on Hanzo, Henning on Uther, and Gia is trying to pile on some stuns with a Kerrigan. As Sweden is hoping to equalize the series here. And ooh, we have an auto attack build from Tykes. 1.1 range straight increase into press for one range. advantage. So that it gives him a 4.5, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's or 5.5, excuse me. That's going to make me immediately curious what they are picking on level 7. If they're going to go for a bit of a hybrid, or if it's really going to be combat tactician and maybe even the stacks on level 4. Oh, Henning's the target of a, a toss combo, unaverted, maybe punished for that aggression, and first blood to Sweden! I actually like that, because I was about to ask, hey, now we have the United States in the composition that Sweden usually plays. How is Sweden going to react to this? And now we know they're coming in, and they are instantly killing Garrosh. <laughs> so like, yeah, you're trying to uh, take a page out of our book. We invented this shit. The spray game on point we know with how the to Alarac. With All right. That is a good point, though, too. It's like, oh, you want to take our Garrosh? Let's show you how to kill it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's show you how it's done. We play this usually. We know exactly how to counter that. But again, only one kill in the early game still. It's obviously GG. Yeah, yeah. again, <laughs> first kill, right? It's always GG. Let's Simple next. geometry. Where's, where's that surrender button? I nah, wish, that, you know, that, they, they so need it. The we should ask the French, they know. So <laughs> Simple geometry for Hanzo at level one. We got the groundbreaker as well. Your Unaverted looking for a toss onto Lobber potentially inside the root. And Lobber, he's doing fine. Kerrigan comes in with a Ravage and Impale. Lobber low once again. The defense matrix from Liam providing a little bit of shielding. Full brawl right here. Yeah, good damage too. Wow. This game is a little bit more explosive, at least initially, compared to what we saw on map number one. So Sweden definitely angry and trying to bring this back. They got first blood, they have a lead in experience now and are taking cams. I like it. Ah, it's gonna be a good one. Series is already great. And there's the stun, there's the jump. Liam in real trouble, running out of hit points quickly. And that is kill number two for the Swedes. Unaverted, trying their best to get a toss on Lobber. Just no, not enough tower shots to take down Muradin. Two to zero in kills. Chunk of experience advantage as well. A solid mm -hmm. level lead, two and, a, two and some seconds in. But of course, there's still lanes to be cleared. It's, I don't think it's that big of a difference. That could get tricky, though, for the first objective. If they pick up mm. that early level seven, even if it's just a 10, 20 second gap, you can make plays around that. As expected, on level four, we have stacks within the rhythm for Tychus, so very likely Combatetician on level seven also being used. But with level four, Speed Bubble is in the game, and that is turning Garrosh into an absolute race car. So he is going to rush into the opponent's team and will try and throw heroes over for quick and easy kills. Problem with that is, of course, if you are only focusing on the front line, then you have Muradin and Chen as targets, and both of them should be able to escape. With the experience deficit in place, I'd like to see North America honestly skip first objective and just go for double soak. It is Arcane Punisher, which is hard to skip. One of the better Punishers, is, it's not Mortar. Maybe they don't go for this. It is still even talent here. Ah, it's, it's hard to call, it's hard to call. I'd like to see NA close the gap on experience. Yeah, Meridian is at the front now, trying to flank this a bit. Spray game again on point and gets swapped over. Doesn't even jump out, just takes it easy here. They're still attempting to chase them away. Chen and Diva are both sitting topside, and level 7 is inching closer and closer for Sweden. The extra talent in their grasp. Six stacks on Garrosh, nine for the Tychus currently. Picking up more regeneration globes on that Chen as well. He's almost done with his level 1, that freshest ingredients. A lot of shapes on the ground. Lobber chopping low has to dwarf toss out as Kerrigan's Ravage connects onto Unaverted, yeah. who's zoning for the allies, and looking like first objective to NA, even though I was doubting. Well, stun was stun, but not. they just pre-tapped, and there's level seven. This is the moment where they want to fight, and there's the flip yeah! trying for it. Nicely done. Not enough damage to be of any consequence, but still, the Punisher has now been claimed. NA has taken it. The lock-in objective number one. Chen not with them just yet. Defense has to start off here as NA is about to lock in the level 7 talent, but Chen is already sitting at the top lane, trying to extend the lead and experience for Sweden. Nice cleanse onto Lobber. Will it be enough? Yes, Henning coming in just in time with that cleanse on Uther. Lobber getting really low. Love that unaverted. Saw the sidewall down. Ran in with the speed barrier, looking for this aggression, playing off the Punisher jump. Bottom lane four maybe going down here. Speed barrier again on to unaverted. Murden gets the dwarf toss out as there's a stun into the face of unaverted. 
in. Yeah, nice damage. They are about to get that forward. They get it very low at least. But here comes Fat Illidan, Swam Grotta jumping in, trying to slow them down. Kerrigan, can she close the gap? And the answer is no. No chance for her to get close enough to get those stun connects. Two kills for Sweden to zero. But the first objective went to the United States and they did tons of damage at the bot lane. Fantastic siege from North America as Liam's gotten great value in the top lane currently. 10 talent tier, as I mentioned, one and a half levels away. And that'll be available for our next Punisher phasing. We're just looking at some of the experience differences here. I'm trying to figure out where, where it's fallen behind, where it's being gained. And it's mostly just mercenaries, minions, and the heroic kills so far. Yeah, still a little bit of... <laughs> oh, Lauber, come on! <laughs> oh, he's having fun. You gotta love Lauber. Oh, I do. Uh, he's just fantastic. Now, will we see an invade on the camp from North America? I love how he always also embraces the memes. I mean, the guy has been dying so many times in the first minute. Oh, and yeah. He's just literally pulling a Lauber. He just embraced it full on. He said, like, yeah, sometimes these things are not working as I intend to. But it's just, it's just funny. The, the Mount Choice, on the other hand, I gotta criticize him for that. He definitely has a money pick lying around somewhere. And if you already put your spray game on point, then you have definitely an opportunity to switch out the Mount as well. If this series goes the distance like you're hoping for, he's got a couple games to change it up at least. Yeah, definitely. Wandering Keg, Dragon's Arrow, Divine Shield, Ultralisk, and what will Muradin be going for? We got Relentless Soldier for uh, Tychus. Uh, not sure if you already pointed it out, but really, no, 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 I didn't. really good talent for them to take. So I was talking about Cormac Tartician a bit earlier, which we oftentimes see with the order attack build that they highlighted with a level 1 and level 4 talent on Tychus. But this is a really, really strong talent is, for yeah. them, considering the amount of stuns that we have on the other side. So great choice for Tychus, gives him a bit more survival ability as both teams lock in level 10 talents just in time for the next objective. Stay a while and listen so good. Respect the elderly, which is the level 20 I was forgetting earlier, is a great upgrade as well for Deckard Kane, but okay, I was gonna say that I don't I don't think we get Lornado. I just I just don't see it happening. We're gonna get that stay a while and listen for Deckard Kane. Good AoE CC. Bunny hop again for Diva as well. Not sure if you share the same love as Trixler does for Bunny Hop. I, I love Bunny Hop. Like, if you play Diva, it has to be Bunny Hop. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's I don't Micro even know why I cool. like it. It's just funny. It is. No, it's it's so rewarding when you hit that third bounce on someone and they get <laughs> stunned. You're like, hey. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what it is, but it's one of those sounds that is just, it's, it's very entertaining. Well, we have camps now lined up. Shrine is popping up. This is going to be the big one. You have Odin. Yeah. This is where the real party starts. And it's also where Sweden is going to try and get kills thanks to that CC chain. So everybody on the side of NA has to be absolutely on point, be aware of what could come their way. Positioning of Hanzo to note it is very important. Keep an eye on that Carrigan as well. So here we go. Let's see what Sweden can do as they are trying to take control of that Shrine. And off we go. Bunny up already started. That one's already out. They're still trying to follow up on Liam a little bit. Swam Grotta sitting at the front, uh, front now, but Odin is in play as well. Stormbolt into Unaverted, gets the toss. That's a mech explosion getting pushed around, and Diva pilots the one to fall. Divine Shield connecting onto Lauber as he's chasing into Legacy, who gets the ally toss. Unaverted looking for more groundbreakers here, but it's Zarya to fall again. NA is unraveling around this second objective phase. Yeah, more kills for Sweden, so they are able to take it. They are at 20 points now against 26, but for an A, there's not a chance in the world to bring this one back. So a Punisher going over to the Swedish team. Going to be a mortar Punisher for them. Very nicely coordinated. I got to say that the initial damage through D.Va and the approach that they had looked very nice for yeah. the blue team, but it didn't quite give them enough power. And we're going to take another look at that fight as well. But very important shrine, of course, for the two teams. We look at back at the shrine, huge mech explosion. You expect it to zone back. It gets bopped away. And I didn't even see Gia gets the flank onto Decker Kane while he's telling a story. And that just disrupted everything. Once again, Gia being a playmaker for the allies. Yeah, and now we have a slight lead in experience for Sweden that also translates directly into a talent advantage that they used with this push. Not able to take the fort down. Bunny Hop had to be activated at the top again to safeguard Liam here. It's really the kills that differentiate the two teams right now. Those three kills and the extra experience that Sweden gets because of it. Uh, arrow missing. They have a few more stuns they could use. Already the barrel play being made. Diva has top side, so they really want to force this fight. They are hoping the old man with another story 
make those ears bleed, but they are able to walk away. Nicely done. I couldn't imagine a story that makes your ears bleed. That's terrifying. Oh, dude, like, really? Some people, like... <laughs> right, well, actually, Deca, Deca now that Kane. you say that, now that you say that, when I've gone to the bar and it's like, oh, God, please stop. No, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm done listening. <laughs> like, I have some relatives, when I have a phone call, I have to really book two hours or it's just, going to be rough. You're sitting there with their phone out here, just, oh, oh, here we go. It's just... <laughs> I'm not even joking. Two minutes in and all of a sudden we're talking about the last war. It's... <laughs> Well, Diva's going to have some time to talk about the last Overwatch match she was in. She'll be dead for the next 22 seconds. Madara working on the camp with the help of allies. And this is still experience advantage with, uh, for the side of Sweden as our third objective will be in the top lane. The last one was Mortar, correct? So this one will yes. be Frozen as that's the rotation. Yep. Yeah, half a level ahead. Four kills to zero. It still feels the entire time like at some point there is going to be a flip and uh, NA will execute that combo that they're looking for and be able to get some kills. And once that happens, once, for example, I don't know, Kerrigan falls, there is, there is some snowball potential in fights mm -hmm. for NA. So with them, you have to be super careful. Yes, Sweden is looking pretty strong right now, half a level ahead. Put some structure damage uh -oh. out, they have more kills. But I could flip any second. Stun into stun. Again, it's Mirrodin, it's a little bit of a bush party. But he's walking away, and there it is, the attack against Mirrodin. The Divine Shield is out, Stormbolts are coming, Bunny Hop is in. We have the Keck play as well. They're turning on D.Va once more, able to take the mech down. Lauva surviving still several times, so low on HP that I thought he was a goner. But once saved by Uther, and then towards the end, able to walk out of harm's way. This is like the rebirth of Lobber. He's a new man. He's the opposite of Inting. He's the, he's always surviving. <laughs> <laughs> Don't curse him. The caster curse is going to hit hard. Uh, well, what do you think I'm trying to do? <laughs> ah, the bias is real over here. Look I, at that. I, I got to try and help wow. out NA when I can. They're on their own. Wow, unbelievable. I can't believe it either. But we do have our next Punisher coming up. 16 advantage for Sweden. North America, United States, trying to close that gap. Just a little chonky bit of experience left to go, a wave or two, which easily will crash in through top lane. I actually like also how many stacks we now have for uh, Tychus, and this is something that I pointed out in uh, a different match. If you have Garrosh plus Tychus, if he flips the target in, you get a lot of stacks on your level 4 if you went down that path. So he's at 79 already. That gives him a pretty good duration. We're only on objective number 3. If he continues that throughout the entire game, he will have a fantastic minigun duration towards the end and get good damage out against those frontline Huge Dragon Arrow will connect onto a lot of United States members. Diva's got Defense Matrix out. Mech Explosion will be utilized as well. Unaverted, is he going for the ally toss? Absolutely. Stay well. Listen, catches Lobber. He gets out just fine. They go for Diva again. At least they try to, but there's the Mech. Unaverted, a little bit low. Gets the shield and the stun switches. And Deckard Kane goes down faster than Joe Biden as we have Sweden moving in for the rest of the United States. Garrosh eliminated, and they are chasing Facing them down with another double stun. The combo is real, and it is Madara who's in real trouble as Swam Grotta is trying to chase him. Tigers gets out, but with two heroes gone, NA is once again about to lose an objective. Beautiful divine shield from Henning connecting into Gia. That's just, that was exactly what Sweden needed. A divine shield, Gia popping off, making the plays, pulling people around, getting those impales, and sec excuse me, third objective, Frozen Punisher, the best Punisher to have an advantage like this with, will be in favor of Sweden, barreling through top lane. What starts to worry me a little bit is that NA still hasn't gotten a single kill. If you're talking yeah. about the early game until level 10, yes, some of your key abilities are not really there yet, and then you build up those synergies. But now this is objective number three. We're 14 minutes in, we're on level 18, and they still haven't gotten a single kill. So. This is getting real worrisome. There's so many stuns, and we could see it again, that Sweden is able to just shut them down. And look how they're dealing with the oh. insta-kill. She has no chance. There's always a stun available that could hit her next. They can go nearly for an endless rotation of stuns, and it's really paying dividends. This is kill 8 to 0. The experience is showing that as well. A solid level lead and then some for Sweden as our next Punisher will be announced soon. Actually, it's not even going to be announced soon, sorry. Or it's shown on the map soon because the Punisher's still in top lane. Yep. United States says, oh, we don't care about it. it it'll, it'll clear itself. Unfortunately, this Punisher does lock down structures. It gets insane value when just left to its own devices. We're talking fort, keep front gate, and some little slaps onto Cure. 
Now, as Sweden is pushing into the middle, they are, of course, hoping for a bit more structural damage because if you look at the minimap, not at that far ahead. The top damage against the keep is great, but you want to make sure that you have some catapult pressure too. And currently, it's technically two forts against two forts. <laughs> this is annoying, but I hate as long as it doesn't fall, they're yeah. fine. Problem is, of course, once they lose a big team fight, Sweden has now a chance to go through top lane, break this apart, and go directly for the core. But the impact on the map with the amount of catapults that it spawns is identical for the two teams. It's it's that long death timer team fight that I'm away um, I'm afraid for for United States. If Sweden can take one good team fight, and they will look for a team fight fairly soon with that 20 talent tier advantage rounding the corner in a ki in a in a wave or so. Wandering Keg does go fishing for Cure. Cure split from his allies. Expulsion zone as well. Toss on to Lobber. Huge scroll of ceiling from Decker Kane, but it's just not going to land the CC they want. Defenses are in place. No counter kills. But of course, Sweden doesn't find any kill of their own. So United States got to be okay-ish with this. And he has level 20. And now you're in even more trouble. Oh, That's no. an additional stun. Diva is just getting melted away. Another kill against her. And it's getting ridiculous over here. So they farm her whenever they can. Eight kills to zero. We have with Bullseye an additional stun for Hanzo. We have the Rewind. That's another Stormbolt. Uther's Redemption. So once he... He can just let himself get killed, get the heals out. This is so dangerous for NA. They lose the fort in the middle. Immediately, Sweden Good hits call. the rotation towards the bottom. Takes another one out. It's a freebie right there. And since the next shrine also spawns bot side, they can then go and push for keep. NA... They just sit there and they have to take it for the next level. They can't do anything until they have their own Storm Talents, unless somehow, somewhere, they can set up a gank. And considering that Sweden roams as a five-man, that's highly unlikely. Oh, Cure. Hopefully able to back out of this. I don't know. He might have been caught out. There's the Indomitable from Garrosh. The Expulsion Zone will come out. Speed Barrier allows the runaway. No kill on Cure. The top lane Fallen Shaw will be cleared out while North America continues to lurk around the map, trying to find these waves. I don't know about this camp in the mid-bottom area, though. I'm a little nervous about this. Yeah, the thing with, uh, with NA is, though, and I've spoken about this on stream, I've spoken about this with Sweden, and they have exactly the same impression here. You, you push NA back, and they always sit there, they somehow survive, they survive, they survive, they survive, and if you are not really building on your advantages, they will find that one moment where they can flip the game on you. Mm. And that's what makes them so un incredibly scary. They are experienced players, they have been around for a long, long time. They are not all of a sudden going to resign themselves to a loss. They play until it's over. And it's very, very scary sometimes, because you're dominating, you have eight kills to zero, you win every team fight, you push them back, you take structures, and then all of a sudden, they are on level 20, they have the same talent here than you do and one fight is all they need to bring momentum into play for themselves and then can take it so this is something where they got to be cautious and already they're threatening Anzo here and I say done by Unaverted. Expulsion zone locks Lobber up against the wall the commandeer with the big red button has been summoned we do have that titanic might and keep in mind the respect the elderly for Decker Kane huge bunny hop value from Liam which will expire now the ultra list cleared out Chen trying to drink through the pain the big red button does take down the panda first kill for NA but of course Zarya does go down in the trade NA with a kill 18 minutes in Zarya's eliminated at the stuns they go for Diva Liam gets attacked again and he falls once more legacy in trouble as well on the run the old time I try and move to the right that's not happening it's kill 11 for Sweden and they're going on the chase Lauba already hoping to drop Madara Taike is in the corner and they are not giving him a chance but Muradin falls first he got the counter kill at least good news for them but at the top the keep falls and now Sweden has to decide how they want to play this seems like objective is enough for now United States they only have Garrosh here and he won't be able to do anything I'm wondering if Sweden considers the 39 not to get camps, but to get everyone back in place to, to push this push into this as five. Of course, it gives the United States the opportunity to respawn as well, but you also are backed by a Punisher. I'd like to see the 39 so Lobber can join in. We'll have to wait and see what Gia and the rest will do. But also on the right-hand side, like that Skogan Henning are like, okay, Kerrigan, you do this really good. We go get a camp, add some supplemental pressure to another lane, and we can all group back up, go for this push. There's the, yeah, you can see Gia starting to yeah, pull to the side. They're playing it slow. There's I like no it. I like it. No, it's, it's exactly else. what I would like to see from Sweden here if they want to win. They have 
they don't have a lot more camps that they can take, but they can push some of the lanes out a little bit. And they do that already in the middle. Obviously, it allows Tigers to be back, but he would have been ready for the defense anyways. So there was no need to rush this. You allow everybody to get back up. Top keep has already been killed, and this is working in their favor for sure. There's one thing I, I I just had something I was I was looking on the on the screen I was like oh I'm gonna note that and then I just completely got distracted looking at the <laughs> setup for everyone here in this bottom lane this could be where Sweden makes this best of five in the lower bracket a one one if they can push past this keep go to core honestly if Sweden finds a few kills they side while they go core this is looking very positive for Sweden it's all on NA to make a big play right now Muradin gets flipped jumps out activates Avatar. And off we go. The explosion doesn't get enough value, zones them out a little bit and buys a sliver of time here for NA. The arrow gets dodged. Nice awareness of the blue team, but they still want that keep. And so far, the defense is actually pretty strong. Stay one, listen, with the respect the elder. You see that silence, that blind, as Sweden walks away. And I do think NA has the hold. We hold! Yeah, they hold, but I also think that Sweden is willing to go for the long game because yeah. now they have map pressure. Another flip. No follow-up CC, I think, onto Lover. I'm not sure if that connected. Doesn't matter either way. The camp will be. Look, look at Garrigan here. <laughs> I know, she's waiting for that Ravage jump over the wall. I like it. I dare you. Go through the choke point. She is sitting there just, just like, all right, let's go. Move a little bit farther mm -hmm. to the right. Just just do it and see what happens. Oh, right. it's it's tense, though. North it America. Is. United States has to make all of the correct choices. Sweden. Uh, not, not so much because they still have their keep in bottom lane. It's it's across the map. If they lose one or two, it's not the end of the world. They lose their keep, but I don't think they lose game. Yeah, right now, the game lasting longer favors Sweden. They yes. have taken down more structures. The catapults are going to scale, and every lane is going to push more aggressively towards the structures of the blue team. So as long as there's nothing really to lose for Sweden, they don't have to be aggressive. They don't have to be the ones to just go deep now. Any lane that accumulates a few catapults is going to do tons and tons of damage as we're getting to 25 minutes soon TM. So with another objective in the middle, it will eventually force a split on the blue team. They will have to send somebody back to defend, and that is usually the cue for Sweden in this case to just go for the team fight on the objective. So if you can force the opponent to split their attention, it's always a good thing, and this is what they're aiming for. 134 stacks currently on that Tychus in the rhythm. 2 to 12 in kills. A level advantage, but no talent tier differences since we're already past level 20. Svampgrada chilling in the bush, being a ward for their allies as United States rush to top lane to clear things out. If I'm not mistaken, our Punisher announcement shouldn't be far off. Yeah, and now if you just look at the minimap, lanes are pushing already hard, and uh, they have, of course, vision on the opponent's team. They know that nobody can be ganked here. It's all about really calling, making sure that you double-check the bushes. You don't want to lose the game right now because you don't pay attention once and you fall into a trap. That's like a worst-case scenario. And they're doing this now as they're trying to push this towards the mid-keep. And just a couple of shots here is already all you need to slowly whittle this down. And again, catapults are hitting hard at this point, so that's your mid-keep down to 50% HP. Less than that, even. And if Punisher is achieved by Sweden, that's looking real terrifying. The one thing that I ha take away from this tournament so far is that apparently somebody on the Swedish side took, Mer uh, took Lauber and sat him down and said, like, dude, listen, no playmaker. Like, he's been playing... I want to throw my headphones. I won't, but I want to. All the time, and against it's anybody a good talent. Else, I would have absolutely expected him to bust it out. He loves that, but here it's just full-on try-hard mode with Avatar. And talking about hearts, Van Grota seems to be hard to kill. He barrels out as NA thought they had an opportunity had to take him on. Oof. But there's the retreat. A lot of cooldowns have One, been two, burned three. by NA but they also have, therefore, the upper hand, at least initially, on the Shrine. Gia going for a grab. Won't be able to go. For, won't be able to fish for anything as unaverted land. Okay, big stay on. Listen, we see some pings. Bid right button gets a huge, oh, but the, the divine, divine shield. shield. Oh, beautifully done from Henning. Dragon arrow will connect, and it's legacy to God. fall. Unaverted getting low. Titanic Mike gets a huge toss. That will be Uther to fall. He's got redemption, yeah, though. He does. He's going to heal the hell out of them and then respawn. That's Zarya gone. Cure already eliminated. Another Stormbolt is seeing it. Hardest Lauber is going for the next kill. Gio follows up with another Sun Combo on Kerrigan. And that is Tyke is gone. Diva dead. The pilot on the run. It's a full five-man team. Wipe as Sweden.
goes for victory in game number two. NA took the lead on Towers of Doom, but Infernal Shrines goes to the Europeans as Sweden drops the shield, drops the core, and equalizes the series in the loser's bracket. Patiently played by Sweden and methodically played by Sweden. I really love what they did on this map. Lobber showcasing Murden at his best. And I said it in the draft, boys, we get 13, we win the game. Bronze beard rage all day. Those beards, those beards, Kaldor. Exactly. I mean, I, I can't really compare this one with, with yours. Like, that's not quite on the same level, but it is what it is. <laughs> on the other hand, what I find really cool is that Zarya... Garrosh, always played by Sweden, they are faced with the comp that they not only pioneered mm -hmm. ages ago, but also now used in this tournament, in the playoffs, everywhere else, and it's just looking fantastic the way they deal with it. They know the weaknesses, they know the strengths, they exploited them, and they did a great job with it. So we have a series on our hands, for sure, nicely done. And yeah, I can't wait for the rest of the games. We're going five maps. We're, go we're guaranteed right now, we're guaranteed four in total for this series. Yeah. That means, because... Map four is where things get weird, and that's what I love about these best of fives and the Meta Madness draft style. So I think it's time to give these players a little bit of a break, let them stretch yeah. their legs. We're going to get ourselves a little bit of water. And when we come back, it'll be map number three. We're going to start to see who's going to be shifting into the advantage here in Nations Cup Berlin 2023. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Nations Cup Berlin 2023. My name's Bahamut, joined by Kaldor, and we are in the midst of a loser bracket elimination best of five, and we're one-to-one, -one, NA versus Sweden. And NA is eating my bananas. Oh, NA took your bananas? Yep, they I took actually, my bananas. I actually stole one earlier for Kier, too. I didn't, I didn't say anything. Yeah, yeah, I was, like, sitting there, and I offered them earlier. So at this moment, I literally have the power to starve the NA team. They were asking for something, and, uh, well, we had still some cast bananas here. I'm like, all right, all right, all right, I can have some few of them. So, yeah. These are the, these are our important bananas. We need these. Nobody tells the Sweden. Oh yeah, yeah. Please don't. We need the. There's only three left. Either way, we're going to be heading into a map number three. As I mentioned, the score is one to one between these teams in an elimination best of five. Winner will be going up against Germany in the grand finals, a best of seven. Loser goes home in third place. Well, they don't go home just yet. They get to enjoy the rest of the day. But of course, Kaldar, we're going to Garden of Terror. This is the map in the initial matchup of USA versus Sweden that. USA fell on, and that lost them that best of five. This is a little bit of a, I feel like a little bit of a revenge map here. I'm actually really curious to see how the drafts are going to pan out here, because I would expect that a few of the usual suspects are instantly going to be banned. Hogger, for example. Yes. I don't think he is going to appear here. They're going to get rid of him. But we talked on other maps about Greymane as an example. Love he can excel here. He can be really strong. If Rega is available, which in this tournament he is not, he's one of the pre-bands, then oftentimes it's even a duo. You get Rega, you get Greymane, the two of them go through the camps. And this is the map that has the most mercenary camps. So it really sure. plays a big role if you have a combo that can take them down quickly. Jaina is another one that gets added value here. You can combo her off with a bit of burst damage when you're trying to go for a sniper composition. And she also helps you with the camps a lot because a good ability rotation is taking down so many camps pretty much right away. So. Definitely a couple of options for the teams here. And yeah, I'm curious. Let me see what they have. Hogger probably going to be banned by Sweden, I would assume. But this is going to be a good one. Also, a very big deviation away from the maps and the games that we've seen so far. Garden of Terror is just a beast in and of itself. Oh, yeah. Camps, camps, camps. A little bit of team fighting here and then more camps. First pick. First band goes over to the side of United States as they opted into that as the losing team. Sweden is the one to choose to take us to Garden of Terror. Of course, it's ever looming the Swamp Grata Murky. The reason I bring it up here is, of course, Bride. Yeah, yeah. And, well, in this case, an already an Abathur band. I like it. By the way, everybody that's looking at the screen right now and is wondering what exactly are they looking at on their screen. So this is a sheet that the admins prepare for each series mm -hmm. where all the heroes that have been played and the pre-bands are marked down so that they are always aware of what is still available, what can still be played to avoid any mistakes within the draft. So the admins do that for all of the players. Players have access to check it out. And during the draft, you will see most of them either using a phone, a tablet, or in this case, a Tabbing, screen yeah. to just make sure that they know exactly what is still open. Big shout out to also the admins who are doing that in the background, watching and filling that out to keep the players up to date so we don't run into any issues where it's like, did we play a Murden? I'm not sure. Let's pick it and then see if the admins kick us out of the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, the Illidan ban. I like this. No, Getting I don't like it at all. I want to have an Illidan. Well, but, but that, no, no, no. That just means Illidan later. 
Fair enough. Okay, I'll take that. We get a little later. All right, I'm with you right there. But uh, banning out the fun pigs is, you know, I don't enjoy that. Holger has been given the axe as expected. No surprise there. Nobody wants to go up against a team that has Holger on Garden of Terror. But we still have a couple of other options. I mean, even Vikings could technically be played here. And it's something that a lot of teams got rid of. Sweden has also banned out Vikings a couple of times, but mm -hmm. they could play them themselves. And Western yeah, we're getting in that territory we were talking about earlier. Game three, game four, mm, we get, get game five. The drafts become a little more wild, but absolutely, I like the Vikings. Not, not every Viking goes bribe, but what I do like from Vikings is Mercenary Lord. You put a Viking in each lane, you've got each lane having camps being pushed in, get that amplified camp pressure. Mercenary Queen can't be picked up because I do believe Savannah has already played, but a first pick Medivh out the gate for United States. Who played a kidnap combo just yesterday. So this is, is something... on the minds of Sweden? Yeah, Sweden has to immediately think, hey, do we pick anything away? Do we let it happen? How do we counter it? What is still available that helps us to dodge out on the worst here? But yes, this could get very wild quickly. If you're committing to Medivh as your first pick, that's going to be more than interesting. Problem is though, if you show Medivh this early in the draft, you allow the opponent to uh, just pick heroes that can control portals. Gust also from Falstead right here all yeah. already. You got a Varian taunt, so you come through exactly. the portal, boom, you're locked in place, the portal expires, and you can't get out, you're locked out of your house. Absolutely. Anything that helps you to uh, deny portal access I like this. is you made a, That's a very good point. ETC was one of the heroes. I mean, these days he's fallen off a little bit, but oftentimes he was played because once that the portal is there, you slide through, you poop targets away from it, and you can get a, get a lot of value throughout all the abilities of ETC. But uh, they are going for Falstead. They have Barry in here. Stitches. They could have tried to pick him away. I mean, once Medivh was picked as an early pick, it was already telegraphed. They're going to go for a kidnap combo mm -hmm. again. But in this case now, Sweden has all the time in the world to prepare for it. They knew what was coming. They could decide, do we want to pick Stitches away? Is that something that is worth it for us? Or does it disrupt our own plans too much? They decided to just let it go. And now we'll see how they are following up on it. But this was, of course, not a mystery. This is not like a last big curveball oh, that yeah. all of a sudden gets thrown out by an A. I like the respect ban on Takir's Zareth tool. Things like Taronda, I believe, are still up and available. Would like to see her synergized or picked up with the United States draft. Last ban from United States as well. Maybe we target a healer, limit that pool mm. a little bit. Don't forget, Taronda would also be very good for the composition on the side of Sweden. If you That's have a Varian, point. and That's then you fall off too. on that. And they played her in the past. Henning played Taronda, and it's always a bit of a mixed bag with her because she's just so squishy, and if you get on her, she's dead. But he has such good positioning with her that in multiple games in the past, he made her work exceptionally well. So it is an option for them, for sure. I'm waiting. I'm waiting patiently to see what Sweden considers here. Is it that Taranda to steal it away? Is it going to be something else to lock players in there? Yes, I like the Stukov. I love the Grey main. Sweden picking up an S tier draft at this yeah. point. I mean, I've been talking about Grey Main and how important he can be on this map. It's always a question of what else is up, but he gives you that ability to go for mercenary camps, lock them in quickly, and together with Varian, you now have the bullet, you have Stuka for the follow-up. You're going for a sniper composition, and you can try to isolate targets even further with Falser just dropping that gust. <sighs> Scary. How does United States pull this back? ETC? I'm not too sure about this ETC. The I mean, it looks like a global for them. ETC yeah, on the yeah. side lane, so they're most likely going to go stage dive with him and try to macro it out a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried for United States. We'll see. I just don't want the cow to get cooked. I don't want barbecue for lunch. I mean, barbecue I for lunch mind. does sound good, but I don't want it to be United States barbecue. I'd rather it be Sweden getting the one being barbecue. You want here. the chicken, not the beef. Exactly, exactly. I want, I, yeah, Swift Wing, you're right. <laughs> Last pick, though, we're going to be finding out here from Sweden. It's a Death Wing. We talked about this actually in another matchup. Trick and I were talking about it. Death Wing, good to block those hooks from stitches because you can't pull a Death Wing with a hook. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Deathwing also interesting here because it gives them a bit more mobility on that map just overall. But yeah, I kind of like it. There's obviously the thought of a kidnap comp still there. So in this case, you get the hook with stitches, you use Gorge Portal to get the target away, drops out, ATC slides through, and then on top of that, you have a seven-sided strike. You also have a trap that you can utilize. So there's a lot of synergies here. First, you have to hit that hook. If that can be blocked by Deathwing, yes. then you are in a great spot there. But it's going to be a spicy game for sure. 
And it's always a bit of a question. Do you land those important hooks, yes or no? And I think that Sweden is going to try and make it as difficult as possible. They have a lot of tools themselves here. We talked Deathwing, Falstead Gust. Even if Varian gets hit, you can play a little bit around the taunt and slow them, slow them down, throw them a little bit off balance. So, yeah. It's going to be a really good matchup here on Garden of Terrors. We're about to load on in. I personally think NA can do it. I know I know they didn't execute, I believe, yesterday with this composition, but I think they can do it, and we're about to jump into Garden of Terror. Let's introduce our teams on the left-hand side. Make some noise. I want to hear you all the way in the caster booth. For United States, Madara playing Junkrat. Here on the Bird Medivh. Unaverted hooking his way on stitches. ETC to be played by Liam. And Karazim will punch his way through the enemy team's face. Played by Legacy. And over to the right side. The IKEA boys with Swam Grotta on Deathwing. Skok on Greyman. We got Lauba as the tank on Varian looking for those taunts. Gia is playing Falstead and Henning on Stukov. We move into our mid lane. We got auto attack Falstead, Lion's Maw on the Varian. Everything else looking pretty normal, though. Liam holding on ETC, that level one, gonna be the guitar solo, actually. A little more sustainability from him, Patrick Creation as well. But Cure drops to 50%, nearly losing that one stack of Arcane Rift. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Medivh. He wants to, of course, stack this up as quickly as he can. Portal players are going to be the bread and butter of this composition. You want to make sure that whenever Stitches hits a gorge, you're ready for him. But also outside of that, just moving into the backline of the opponent's team is always an option here for them. Cure stepping up, looking for more Arcane Rifts. Won't be able to do so. Plays respectably as Unaverted's forced to tap well on top. Down in the bottom lane, Liam versus Deathwing. Or Liam versus Swamp God, excuse me. Ah, that's a rough matchup, honestly. I feel like Deathwing just just keeps pummeling, pummeling beef. Yeah, so ETC with that stage dive. I mean, it's really a bit of a throwback to the good old days when we had ETC as a main tank, but also doubling as a side laner, and HGC teams could pick him early and then decide later on in the draft which role they want him to fill. So, bit of a global counterplay. I like the adaptation. You have Falsehood against you, Deathwing now too, so you really want to make sure that you have something you can throw in such a big map onto the side lane so that they are not in the lake just out rotating you. So a good thought process here from NA. The power slide after a gorge, maybe straight into a seven-sided strike is also quite beneficial for them. But of course you have to coordinate throughout all of this and it's gonna be gonna be challenging. Camp in the top lane and in mid favoring Sweden, looking to pressure this fort front gate. Unaverted Legacy and Madara doing their best to abate this pressure and should be able to do so easily. Cure picking up seventh stack. Yeah, there's Taunt. So with level four, we already have it online. G uh, with some damage down here at the bottom of the map. Oh, sorry, in the middle, starting to take one of the towers down fairly quickly. So a good rotation from Sweden and some easy damage that they're getting here against those structures. Skog is doing what he has to do as Greyman. It's his responsibility to deal with most of these camps, as we highlighted in the draft. And we have both teams, of course, focusing on mercenary camps quite a bit. You want to apply that pressure on the lane. Taste for explosions for Junkrat. Going to scale up his damage on the frag launcher grenades. Not going for steel trap upgrades at four. Maybe we'll see that at level seven. But until then, we'll have to watch what Madara does with this adjusted talent pick. The talent, these are just the talent picks. Top side, the bird, grey main. Both of them still looking if they can maybe get a bit cheeky and try and look for a kill here. Cure, of course, with 10 stacks right now. And Deathwing is in, needs a little bit of company as Junkrat in the middle is in trouble. Oof. And he goes down. That's a quick kill on the first blood for Sweden. Able to take one of the main damage dealers of NA out. Liam trying to get back towards the fort front gate. A huge slow. Putting him in a scary spot. Easily able to mount up, make a rotation to top lane as this fort front gate has fallen. Brandon, I don't know if you want to be there. Legacy coming in with the block totem. A hook will connect onto Lover. Can he back away the healing pathogen? Spread around, and it's a clean disengage. An easy kill. Madara back in the mix. It was also really interesting to see that once Junkrat was gone, they immediately went for structures because they knew that there is no displacement anymore in this particular situation that an A could use to just boop them over the wall and capitalize on it. So they had the freedom to leave Greyman in Wagen form and just chunk down those buildings. Liam at the top, 
with a slight low in HP. And Greyman is there again. It's these Greyman rotations and him in Wargen form that allow them to do so much damage. They give up this first seed, but they are opening all of these walls up. So Sweden with some calculated rotations and really capitalizing on that Greyman pick. I want to note really quickly, we got ETC going for that Echo Pedal at level 7. Not a not a common pickup, but with this draft, it does make sense. Absolutely. It's definitely a talent that you pick up when you go for stage dive yep. because you have a little bit more clear on the waves. And this was always the indicator back in HTC days, what you would see as an old. So I think at this point, given the draft, given what they're facing off against and the talent choice, we can safely assume that it will be a global, stitch, uh, global ETC with stage dive. Deathwing taking a small amount of damage. Nothing really threatening on Swamp Grotto, who did go into this melee destroyer build, it looks. Varian hovering around Liam. Liam playing it safe right in front of the fort front gate. First objective spawning, excuse me, second objective spawning. We missed the first one completely. We'll be spawning in the north side, in the center of the map. Ten talents here, just about a level away for both these sides. Big thing, the last thing I want to note here, secret weapon for the Falstead, synergizing with his one and, of course, level four for that extra healing. Swamp Grotto dropping really low, but he won't lose an armor plate. Yeah, I went for the barbecue up top side. We still have down at the bottom now Falstead. So Falstead is actually playing this really well. They're going for some global value since he will be able to push out that lane, but still then go towards the top and fight for the seat if they choose to do so. But they're still continuing with these Greymane plays that I highlighted earlier. They're willing to give up some space. They're willing to just buy some time down here at the bottom and not go straight up for those seat. Taking two towers down, just continuing the trend from earlier, which even results in them picking up the early level 10. It almost feels like Sweden's controlling the macro here, forcing the rotations. Everyone from America, North America, is going to top lane to fight Deathwing. So Sweden says, okay, they're in top lane, Deathwing is fine, we all rotate to bottom, we pressure Liam, we get a fort front and they keep doing this. They did it in mid lane earlier against the Junkrat, and they will steal away this camp with the 10 talent to your advantage. Just to note, Varian went into shield wall, no charge, cooldown, as that's a huge taunt into the stitches, portal, Oh, he's still literally Thanks right there. Nine. The portal was shy, and Greymane goes down. First kill for the side of United States. Nicely done. Greymane killed. Job well done. Four sets, though, is a bit far down at the bottom. Can uh -oh. Dia fly out here? Can he hard? It seems like he is toast. And that's a bunch of chicken wings for NA. Well played. Two kills to one. Alrighty, two to one, and we are looking at that stage dive, seven-sided rip tire. Nothing crazy. Out of the, only, the only thing, as I mentioned, shield wall for Varian, much safer rather than going for the consistent four-second charge. Lobber anchoring just above this second objective phase that still hasn't been captured. I do think. Oh no, they're looking. They scouted out Lobber with Cure. Is he dead? Yeah, not yet. So at this point, the question is whether or not they're using ETC, but he's still on cooldown on Gushin. the global. That was a nice move on the other hand, and Lauba is once again in trouble. Stukov coming in with a big slap and saving the day for Varian. Beautiful displacement from Henning, denying the kill. Sidestep from Skog. Whew. Yeah, Deathwing, of course, can be such a nuisance over here. Whenever you want to go for a channel and his interrupts, uh, very similar with Junkrat, who's dropping seven, one yeah. grenade after another. Portals are out again. They're trying for oh, no! Lauba. And they just can't get him. Another, another, another hook! Another shield, and they are getting out. Wait, does Liam steal the objective just below? Yep. It oh, my God! Nicely done. Metal Gear Liam. That was pretty sweet. Gets the objective and, well, no kill for Sweden in that encounter. The only thing they were able to do is save Lauba, who was the initial target of the Hook Gorge. Liking what we're seeing so far from the United States and their momentum here on Garden of Terror. They want to win this map. They want to prove that yesterday's Garden of Terror was a fluke and they should have been the one to beat out Sweden. They should have been the ones to start up against Germany today. And Sweden was the one who needed to go through the bottom bracket. But that's all in the past. I mean, it doesn't really matter who sends them into the loser's bracket if it's Sweden, if it's Germany. Wow. I think it... Okay, all right. You and I are going to have words later about this. Later. Later. Bring it. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, that was wrong. Beautiful, beautifully done. But 13s are here for both sides. We're going to get another seed. Could be Garden Terror for the side of the United States, but the positioning favors Sweden. I think USA gives this away, looks for camps around the map, pushes things out, and works towards that 16 a little bit faster. Yeah, now they have, go, uh, <clears throat> now they have to go for uh, the seed, of course. 
don't want to give the Garden Terrors over, but Falsen is still at the side. So it's all about Globus right now in the macro play, whereas the hooks are really the pivotal point for the United States. Again, the taunt, not enough to save the day. Henning goes down, these hooks are on point. Medivh providing vision. Unaverted has absolutely no problem landing this one. Lauba with a good dodge. And the spray game is once again spectacular, but it doesn't change the fact that they are now going to go up against those Garden Terrors, unless Deathwing can really stall for enough time here, which is a bit questionable, but maybe they can pull it off. Instead, but they're trying to go for Lauba here, and, and they, they might will. get the kill. Oh no, it's Junker at the false stage dive from ETC. Will come through just a touch too late. Cure, 34 stacks. Cure, can he be a bird? Yes. Yeah, Cure is able to fly out, but not only did Sweden deny the objective to NA, they also got the kill. So Junkrat falling here was absolutely massive. Pretty spectacular by the Swedes, honestly. Gotta point out, Lobber went Juggernaut at level 13. 4% damage when he hits someone with that charge. Kind of surprising he went Shield Wall, but at the same time, the burst, the seven-sided, it's a good thing to slap when you're getting Slapped. Yeah. And now what's going to get slapped is apparently that bot lane with Varian already there. Greymane rotating yeah. over. It seems like they're trying to get some extra damage in here. So far they keep themselves out of vision. Trying to keep an A guessing a little bit, but Cure again cheating with Medivh over here. The legal map hack is once again appearing in the skies. 34 stacks. Oh, I was, I was, I was shaking a little bit in my shoes here if he was going to drop 34 stacks this late in the game. It's difficult to bring it back mentally in that point. 15 apiece in our levels, 3-2 to two in kills. Bottom lane has some camps matching, but this is a Garden Terror potentially for USA. Do they give this? It is favorable positionally. Yeah, it's a really good position for them, and they had an experience. It's not a big gap, but it's big enough that they might get level 16 and can capitalize on it with a quick uh, kill. Unless, of course, they're running into trouble here. ETC is again helping out, and they are moving in with a seven-sided strike after the Gorge from Unaverted Stitches. The portal, of course, Good. helping, but they could not get the kill this time. And ETC quickly becomes the target himself. Another Whoa. hook is hitting home, though, and this is getting real dangerous. The slaps are coming, space is created, as Sweden is still fighting for that seed. A beautiful gust from Gia denying the Riptire channel time on Madara, which that Riptire could have killed Grayman with his low health pool. Falstag gets an easy flight down into bottom lane to manage while Liam will match in the Siege. I'm just staring at everything on the minimap right now. Who's going where? Hold on, rotation onto Grayman in top? Nah, we're seeing it. It's, it's just a simple split around the map. 16 advantage to USA. Pulverize is really big now for yes. Stitches. The hooks were already great, but some of the targets were able to escape simply because they could walk away. And now we have Pulverize, so it's even harder for them to get out of here. 70% slow. That's huge. That's a that's not a good time to be running through. It's like running through mud. Of course, Temporal Flux is a huge one for Medivh. Cooldown reduction on his Leyline Seal. Banner of Dalaran, though, on the very, and that's going to be spell power increase. It's really a wild one. We're 12 minutes in. Quest is not quite completed for Medivh. We have three kills to two. But it's just hooks, hooks, hooks. hooks Every single time it's made easy by all of that vision that Medivh provides. But here's Lauba, completely isolated, trying to get out. And despite his best efforts, he falls. And Swam Grotta likely to die as well. A double kill for an A and a completed quest for Medivh. Oh, Medivh will die playing against Skull, but it was all a bait. It was all slowing him down, and Skull goes down. It's a one for three favoring USA. Quest complete. Time to feed. Second he's done with it, he immediately goes down, but that doesn't help Sweden any longer because there's no reset. Garden Terror will go over the side as well as USA. Gia did push out the top lane, but we have Madara. They're all running. The rest of the crew is running to bottom lane. Three members as ETC manages mid. Falstad makes quick work of top lane. Or no, does Liam stick around? Okay, yeah, so Liam sticks around. No, he's baiting me right now. Liam goes to top lane. The rest is either proxying waves, letting the Garden Terror get value. I love this. I love what USA is doing, building that momentum putting pressure into Sweden and forcing them to be the ones to respond. They're abusing the fact that Sweden had so many dead heroes on their side. Now that they're back on the map with five, they can of course start to defend. But even Lauba is still playing it very, very safe here. They know fully well that they're going to suffer some losses. It's just a question of when exactly they can stop the bleeding here. One fort is already down. They can probably kiss the one in the mid lane goodbye. Or can they? Because here comes the counter-attack. Unaverted looked for hook, didn't get it this time. And maybe an opportunity for Sweden to safeguard that fort. 
Cleansing dash into Unaverted, who's oh, another nice cleansing dash. This is a shield wall from Varian, mitigating most of the seven-sided strike. Hammering's up from Falstead, stage dive in from ETC, and Lobber lives with the gust! Insane. No way! Insane. What a disgusting come from NA. Using the ley line after the gorge, and Lauber so many times gets attacked and focused, walks away the first time, gets saved the second time, and somehow he's still alive. But it's just crazy. NA is going for these isolation plays over and over and over again. And Lauber lives, but even if he, I mean, all they need is one kill. Kill him one time with your abilities, and then you can always try, get more, chase them down with portals, build that momentum. And if you can't kill him, fall back and reset. Maybe a potential th threatening Deathwing right here. I'm, I'm just staring at it because there's a lot of allies just north of Deathwing, and he is going to lose an armor plate here. Holy crap, he got shredded. Leyline Seal locks him in place. I don't think there's anything else on top of that. Yeah, top side camp now for Sweden. It's going to outpush the lane a little bit. More than half a level of a lead for NA. They took down one fort. I gotta say, I, I expected a little bit more. I yeah, I, I, I did too, honestly. Two. The one in the middle has taken damage, and since they are unwilling to... Ooh, they, look yeah. at Gia. Gia is afraid of that hook. Gia's sitting there Stitches like... Stitches isn't on map. He's it, it, yeah. Junkrat's not on map. Stitches isn't on map. Cure's not on map. It's just Liam showing realistically. That is very scary. It absolutely is, and the seed is spawning. What Sweden can do is at some point maybe grab that objective, but this one should go over to an A since it's so close to the blue team hitting level 20 that I have to believe Sweden is very uncomfortable making a play for it. 20 talents here, here right now, given away by Sweden. I think they're comfortable with that. They'll be able to get 20 talents here somewhere else in the lane, push back bottom. Varian, wait, what are they setting up for? Are they looking to... Oh, no! A hunk of gorge! That's a portal. Lobber should be dead. He is miles away from his family. They went on vacation and left him home alone. Yeah, not even Vin Diesel can save him there. So that is a kill. Family is gone, and that's a dead Varian. Then again, considering that Varian's family is literally Anduin, I think he's better off without him. <laughs> I don't know Warcraft, what World of Warcraft lore that well, but you know what? I'll take it. Yeah, I don't Just, know either. I make up my own. Mine is way better. Oh, uh, you know what? That's it's what the story Blizzard too. doesn't want you to tell. Ah, they hate each other. They like do. it's not actually Swiftwing. It's Gerald the Bird. That's Falstad's all right. Yeah, it's we all know that. All right, 19 and a half now, so they want to get level 20. It's just, the problem is simply these hooks are hitting. Q is providing vision. He has a very good idea of what's going on every single time that hook hits, especially when you can target uh, someone and bring him into range of a four. That's pretty much a guaranteed kill. The few times that Lauber survived when he was hooked was when there was no fort around, no extra damage coming through, and somebody on his team being close enough to at least assist a little bit. But currently that isn't happening. Seven kills to three. Sweden is waiting for level 20, of course, and then they can attempt to bring it back. But up to this point, they haven't taken a single fort out on uh, the blue team side. The seed spawning position is very, very bad for Sweden as well, so they have to give it up, which means we have two seeds to two once that the game has, so to say, reset. Two things to know. I, ETC with the... Uh Oh god, I'm blanking on the name. I have to look it up really quickly. The Imposing Presence, I just had it. That's really good against the Grey Main, denying his auto attack speed, all that good stuff. But Demoralizing Shout on Varian. We do not see this talent ever realistically. Demoralized nearby enemy here is reducing damage they deal by 40% for 5 seconds. Not very common. It's usually it's Glory to the Alliance, synergistic with the banner, extra healing with Stukov. Just a little thing to note right there. Cataclysm upgrade for Deathwing at level 20. The stood in the fire. And last but not least, of course, the big important one. I don't know. It's ETC didn't pick it. I mean, ETC can still <laughs> obviously make Crowd his choice whether or not I'm he expects curious. to die or wants to go for some cooldown reduction. But the Demoralizing Shout is a really interesting pick that of yeah. course makes sense given how this game is going. Mm -hmm. What has happened so far is that you know, the only hook target is Lauber. And the reason he's dying is because he's fully isolated, the, the team can't get to him in time. If he uses that now, he has a much, much better chance of surviving any fight any combo there, and if the team then can then come in, they might be able to punish North America. So this could be a game-changer talent, always, of course, assuming that he is soaking those hooks again. All right, a critical... Uh, it is crowd pleaser for the ETC at level 20, just going for the AoE upgrade. A little spray on the ground. Basic Nexus spray? Come on! It's a bit sad. It's a sad day. I yeah. think that was Cure, too. I got uh, that was definitely Cure. Like, All right, can we, can we do, like, player finds? Like, they owe us a banana now? <laughs> <laughs>
I don't want Kiss Banana. Well, that's rude of you. Is you go, girl. <laughs> Moderate against the channel. Garden Terror over to the side. Nope, never mind. Deathwing, Skyfall. All right. Hook That's the whole hook. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Does it work? Does Demoralize yeah. and shout save him? Crowd yes, the you see Wind Tunnel. He goes for it. The tower shots are there. And Lobber is going to be saved <laughs> by the Leyline Seal, potentially. Riptire right around. And they say, no, Lobber, you're dead. What a disgusting combo by North America. Sweden is just sitting there. Lauber is just asking, guys, I just want to play the game. What are you doing to me? Can literally take the hands of the keyboard and just let it happen. NA with another objective. That is the second Garden Tour face for them. Eight kills to three. They are looking so good here. Oh man, I wish we could see that there's there's a stat for Aliobs where you can see how long a character's been dead. I'm curious the death time for Lobber in this game. How long has he actually spent dead in this game with how many times he's been picked off by this hook combo? We do have Garden Terrors descending into lane very far deep into top. Can this be keep and more? I mean, honestly, the only thing that I want to see here from Lauber is how many seconds he was stunned throughout the game, how many seconds he could not play the video game. And to answer your question... 171 seconds! Sorry. <laughs> I actually think that they will be able to get much more than one keep here. We have Garden Terror still up. There's only four heroes for Sweden. They gotta wait for Varian. The top keep is definitely falling. And in the middle of the map, there's another opportunity now for them to rotate over and try to drop this one too. They're not really going for core just yet. It's a bit too risky. But they're making the smart choices. And I want to highlight once again, they haven't lost a fort yet. So there is just catapult pressure galore as this game continues. And we're 21 minutes in. These little bastards are starting to rake in the damage. Catapult stealing that double damage to structures. Probably somewhere in the ballpark of 600 to 800 damage currently into these keeps. Falsa's is going for a flight. Is this an ambitious wind tunnel? Uh, he doesn't, yeah. wait, there's, oh, I was going to say, there's a kind of a good angle right there, but Medivh is still there. The wind tunnel doesn't connect. It's not the worst, though, Calder. It's only a 60-second cooldown. Here, though, is Medivh cheats with the Leyline Seal onto two. Yeah, but they are assist, already assist, starting. Assist, assist, They are starting to try and force this no, very, very hard. It. Once again, uh, there's the go. Oh, this time they might be able to control him finally. No, he gets through the portal after all, but this is a lot better for them. And Karasim is all of a sudden down. the and making the engage happen. Unaverted might be in trouble as ETC is jumping in deep. And there is a double kill. Greymane taking down Baldi and drop stitches as well. Cure on the run. ETC already gone. The wolf goes for the beef. Six kills to eight now. And finally, some momentum for Sweden as they are trying to take down not only Cure, but they also oh! want to go for structures. And he makes it happen! Screw your ley line! You're dead, baby! Quadra kill for Sweden. They take down the bottom lane fort. This should be keeping bottom lane, but is it enough time to... Oh, they're going sidewall keep. They <laughs> want this now. Sweden, can they do it? Have they turned a horrible game around? This was massively awful for them in the sense of just getting pummeled left and right with these hook combos. Swamp got a tanking a lot of damage. Oof, they want to go for it. They do not want to go up against these hooks again. It's just so annoying to withstand the combo. Turn around. They made it happen. This is the opportunity right here, right now. Going for the core. Seven kills to eight. Everybody's dead. Kerosene coming back in one second. The gust is already out. The core is falling. It's falling quickly. Seven kills to eight. And it seems like they finally turn it around. Sweden, they're making it happen. They're all low. The first was a folly, but the core is gone, and Sweden takes the lead in the best of five. Insane. What? A, it was so promising for NA. They were going to win it. I thought they had it too. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. I was mentally, I was like, don't cast a curse them. Don't say anything. Just keep being like, yeah, nice hooks. But damn well played from Sweden. Seriously, good plays, good, that, that, that Stukov lurking arm, Henning yeah. MVP in that yeah, moment. Yeah, absolutely. Henning MVP saved the game. They had to, they, they really wanted to force it too. That gust that missed, they were like, guys, we have to force yes. it right now. We have to do it. And then he misses the wind tunnel and you're thinking, oh, oh God, there's no, no it's way. Over. And then, of course, that little interplay happens with Stukov. They slow this down. Once again, Gorge comes in, ETC dives, and Greymane popping off, ripping them apart, getting three kills. And at that point, Cure was really the hero they needed to save. He was the one, if he gets yeah. away, that core does not fall. If Cure gets away there and the Falsa doesn't kill him, he can just sit tight, drop the ley line, buy even more time for them. So that was the big, biggest one. That was, I, I gotta say, hats off to the players here. Uh, I, I just, I can't believe it. I absolutely can't believe they turned that around. Those, those are the games that you just don't win. Like, I play those games in Storm League, and 
it's just like, oh, okay, well, it's late game. They get a hook, they get a gorge, they, they take us away, and we just slowly lose, slowly lose. This was Sweden saying, we are still in it, we cannot give up, and we never surrender. They, li they, they got the Galaxy Quest mentality. If you're North America right now, you're frustrated. I am. <laughs> I am for okay, them. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I'll give it that. If you're a player, you're very frustrated. Even more so, yes. <laughs> I mean, again, I highlighted that, in my opinion, one of their strengths is that they can shrug these things off. Yes, this absolutely. is going to be pretty strong tricky, players. though. They played so well, and as I said, this comp is so disgusting. The <sighs> way that they played it, Lauba just couldn't do anything. And then once those keeps start falling, you just think this is over. One mistake was all that was needed. Of course, the combination, the composition that they played also played in their favor. You have Greyman here. He just chunks these structures down. He goes for the core. He goes for those keeps. And that allowed them to go through that bot lane a lot faster. And again, Falstead killing Medivh. Yeah. Big, big yeah. shout out to him. If Seriously. he does not get that one kill, if GI isn't able to drop him, as the ley line comes out too. Mm -hmm. then it was, it was like one auto yeah. attack yeah. fired yeah. as the ley line hit. Exactly. I was like, oh, it's so close. <laughs> Auto attack build. But on the note of the gray man, I want to I go back to what you're saying. Throughout the early game, we had talked about that. The forced rotations in the top to try and kill Deathwing, so the rest of the team rotates to where Liam is to get initial siege pressure. That constant siege pressure into those off lanes when Liam was trying to defend, that was the that was the early game setup for this late game win. So yeah. the the little little decisions they made on the side of Sweden in the early game paid off in tenfold at the end. Hats off to them. I'm angry, I'm happy at the same time, I'm all sorts of emotions. Well, right now we got a Battlefield of Eternity coming up as our next map, so quite the opposite from what we've seen now. We're going from one of the biggest maps in the pool to one of the smaller ones with only two lanes, a lot of team fighting in the middle as the Immortals are going to clash, so yeah. This is going to be a lot of team fighting here. And as we're heading into game number four, it also means that 30 heroes are unavailable. So a little bit more than that. Plus, plus the initial bands exactly. as well. Exactly, so 38. And, and then we get six more bands throughout the top of the screen exactly. as well. Exactly, so this will get very interesting uh, on draft pens. But there's still a lot of good options out. There's still Jimmy. Is still up. Jimmy right click. Jimmy is there. You have Lunara. Zavala also. Lunara was played a lot by North America. So plenty of options still available for them. Frontline, on the other hand, that might be a bit more interesting. Maybe I wouldn't, we're see I wouldn't that hate Arthas to see. Again. I was just about to say, I wouldn't hate to see Arthas because of his baseline Frozen Tempest yeah. to be able to get the auto, the physical slow, and then the auto attack slow onto enemies that are inside of that. Howling Blast is a potential good setup, maybe paired into Li Ming for that root blow up. You know what I'd really like to see, and no one's doing it? Love to see a Thrall on this map. He, I, I think he's criminally underrated on a map like this because of his just brawliness, as well yeah. as you got Earthquake or even Sundering. Earth and Shields at level 20, great for ally supplemental shields, but also level 20 Blink that blink into the back line with a sundering onto the support, and then you play from back to front. Oh, mwah. You might get one from Germany. Germany I'd has played it a love bit, a so... I'd love, I'd love a green see, Jesus, please. We could see that. Who means that green Moses? He's like parting the seas. Oh, that's better. That's way better. Oh, yeah, and we could that. see uh, on Battlefield, for example, if you have them in the four-man, Trash Lightning is always an option. I love it. I love a good Trash Lightning game, yeah. personally. It's, it's always fun. Is it the best talent? Yes. Because <laughs> then you get Thunderstorm at level 16, too. and it's just, it's just, you're just crashing through health bars. But Battlefield of Eternity, we're going to begin this draft in just a moment. I'm excited to see what's going to be happening. I hope all of you yeah. at home are excited and enjoying the games. Kaldor, if people like this tournament and they want more of them, how can they make that happen? Well, you guys, as mentioned before, I can contribute on the crowdfunding. We still have a couple of goals that are set up as well, to my knowledge. The exclamation mark bands in Twitch chat is going to drop the link into the. Uh, into the description so you can uh, check it out right there the bands in total are also listed again uh, we have more bands coming up for the grand final so if you want to read up on all of the rules you can do that there did we hit that last ban i th i'm not 100 percent certain because i heard something because it has to be we have it. to hit the goal all by right. if this is the last map we have to hit that goal by the end of this we, map as far as i know we've already hit it so that's oh, another yeah. ban on let's go and yes, just got informed. We're heading into the draft, but for the grand final, things are definitely going to spice up a <laughs> bit more.
As now we're focusing on game number four between Sweden and the United States. All 30 heroes that have been played already cannot be played again. In addition to that, you have the heroes listed at the bottom that are also unavailable. And of course, there's still a few to be banned out in the draft itself. And the first one is Vala. So they're looking at damage dealers. I like it. It's a strong ban. You don't have to deal with Hungering Arrow, Reign of Vengeance, and Hogger, of course. He's gone. It just Hogger works on any map. You know what also works on every map? Chogol. <laughs> go for I'm, broke, go Chogol. I'm not so sure about that, though. Chogol on any map? Yeah. Eh. Tell me where he doesn't work. Okay, I'm, I'm giving you that. He works equally well on any map. Mm -hmm. he, equally okay, he well doesn't. over everyone else. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh. doing my own caster math here. Poland would like to have a word with you. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll hang out after. I'll be in the crowd after this best of five, watching the finals as well. But a Mouthiel band, Vala band, no hogger. Who? Okay, I like. I actually really like the Sweden Diablo band. Brandon Unaverted showed really good proficiency on that Diablo in past games as well. Also, we are whittling down the tank pool, and then you, Diablo is still up. You don't want to give that one over to your opponent, oh, yeah. so makes a lot of sense to me. Instead, it's Li Ming. She was one of the prime damage dealers that was still up for grabs, so there we go. United States with good reset mechanics right now. That's definitely going to be a very strong one for them. And what exactly is Sweden going to respond with? This is one of those scenarios where an A was, I don't want to say afraid of, but they were definitely saying, hey, our opponents might have a bit of an edge here. They are more familiar with the format. They played it more often in the past since we're running a lot of these in Europe. So, yeah, might be a bit more tricky for them. Maiev, Artanis, to open things up. Already two strong picks for yeah. Sweden for the map, given uh, that we're on map number four. Control from Maev with Umbral Bind. You've got the uh, amateur opponent assumed. Uh, reactive parry can absolutely be picked up here, but amateur opponent just stronger for the race. Big ol' AoE blinds. We did see the uh, Purifier Beam last night in, in one of those matchups that you and Trixler were casting, but yeah. I don't think on a map like Battlefield we're going to get Purifier Beam. I know. We have the Nano Boosted Li Ming and Marganus on the other hand, so this Woo! is a really strong start for NA as well. That's actually terrifying. A good well played Li Ming that gets a nano boost is just incredible. And if you are able to rank in those resets, you can just go a team, through a team like Hot Butter Through Cheese. It's just nasty. Megan is at sorry, the front. I'm sorry. Hot Butter Through Cheese. Are you new here? Isn't it a hot knife through... Not on this channel. Oh, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> all right. I just, and te I technically it also works. I mean, it does actually. You just have to. No, actually, Swiss, now that I think about it, you need to go it. for the Swiss cheese. Now you need some. You got to get that soft butter, cheese. You can't go for like a Parmesan or anything like that. It just doesn't melt right. But a Sonia ban from Sweden. I like my cheeses quite a bit. We have a last ban from try the United one. States. Well, butter and cheese. <laughs> I try myself. It honestly sounds disgusting, but it's a I mean, funny. a grilled cheese. It's it's like a grilled cheese without the bread. Uh, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> kind of weird. I do like the Taronda ban here. Taronda on yeah. Battlefield Attorney, really, really strong with the Huntress Mark. Exactly. Uh, b back then, in, back in the days when she was still a very viable pick and picked in pretty much every single game, people prioritized her on Battlefield of Eternity compared to other maps. Hunter's Mark on the objective, great. You are just chaining stuns against the opponent, make them a bit more vulnerable too as you're trying to snipe them. So, yeah, she's fantastic here. It's a very, very good ban from <sighs> and Oh, my God. I mean, I'm happy, but I'm upset. I'm happy, but you I'm just upset. Told me. It's a great map. What are you talking about? Because I want it for NA! <laughs> I, I want my cake and I want to eat it too, all right? All right, so now you have to make a choice. Who do you root for here? And I want an answer. Don't give me this dodgy shit. Can just, I, just pick one. Can I, can, I see the, can I see the end of the draft first? Yes, you can see the okay, end of the draft. Okay, I will give you a 100% honest answer. I do want to see the final draft picks here. Imperius, over, I do like the Imperius quite a bit. Being able to Celestial Charge into the Cho'Gall burst ability from Orphea is really strong. It is a double mage, but there's a lot of health to go through for Cho'Gall. Last pick, I want to see what the healer is here. Uh, Ariel's still up, no? Yes. It's Sweden if they go Ariel. It's Sweden all day. I'm a broken man. There is always hope. <laughs> I'll take it. I mean, I'm happy. I know? love the inner struggle. <laughs> Before we came back from break, Calder was like, by the way, you can root for NA. You don't have to be like yeah. biased and everything like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, We're in I'm Europe. The regional banter and the country banter is real. If you're not cheering for your own team, you're doing it wrong. So Sweden, you have I hope you fail. <laughs> wow. You're turning against Shogal? Damn. I'm stuff. turning against Sweden. Not Dude, like, I was promised that I have a real Shogal fan here, but apparently I was misinformed. Like... The first, I'm so torn. The first struggle we've seen at the end of the draft, you immediately turn your back to him. Struggle is sad now. 
I, I got you in a pickle here, don't I? You really do. <laughs> I am. I'm between an Ariel and a, and a Grey Man, or uh, an Ariel and an Artanis right now. And Chogol's right there. Can we have there. a switch? I think <laughs> I broke this one. Yeah. <laughs> can Can Trick come help me, please? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so we get our Chogal draft. Sweden is really going for it. The Oriel as the last pick. Battlefield is coming up. Keep in mind, this is match point. Sweden has a chance here to advance to the grand final and kick out NA. On the left side, in game number four, we have North America. And I want to hear you get loud. They're going to need your energy here, audience, because we've got Liam playing that Li Ming unaverted on the Malganis on a sniping by Legacy, Cure to Stab with Imperius, and Madara dancing around on Orphea. And over to the right side of the map, the meatball, Sweden with from Grotta on our tennis, heading on Oriel. Skok is playing Maev, Gia on Gal, and Lauba, the man himself, on Cho. Stogia? Stogia! <laughs> <laughs> that actually sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with phonetics at times. Little check into the bush from Liam at the start here, checking to see if we got anything crazy at level one. Doesn't really look like it. I like the Naisha's memento for the Maev. Good for clearing camps on our own. Might be able to steal away the fallen shaman from the enemy. And of course, we got Vision from Shogal going to be uh, placed around the map. What's kind of ironic is, by the way, who banned Malthale. Malta got banned by North America, and then Sweden was like, all right, let's go for it. And that's exactly what they're doing here already. I mean, as the game continues, all Jogal memes aside, uh, the more we go into the late game, the stronger this bad boy yes. gets. 16 is the massive power spike. Leaden Orb is a huge one for Chogal. That is the assumed build. We don't see a Runic Bomb build anymore. That used to be the, the Gatling gun, Runic Bomb, where you hit the enemy, get the silence, keep throwing them out, keep silencing. But nah, nah, it's all about those Leaden Orbs, big, 0.75 stuns. Yeah, and then A is already applying pressure down at the bottom of the map, trying to get ahead quickly here. Liam, of course, with tons of damage that he can apply after he gets that nano boost from Ana later on in the game, but already poking out structure slowly. As Gian Lauber are taking a bit of a look at the bottom camp, trying to, of course, lock this in for the team. Top lane, 1v1, still pretty balanced out. Cure just sitting tight, from Grotta the same thing, they're slowing down the lane a little bit, but the real action is down at the bottom of the map. Oh, can we get an armbow blind pulling people around? Doesn't really look like it's going to pull anyone into too bad of a spot. Fan and Ives will be getting resets here Ooh. and there, but Unavert X on a legacy! Oh! No, it's a double kill early on, and Chogo wants to make it the triple he thought about going in, but he has to back away. Yeah, my F, lots of wiggle room right now, lots of space as everybody focused on the double trouble. So Maev gets two kills and that opens up the game. Sweden, they want the 3-1 victory against NA. They want to go to the grand final. They want to go up against Germany. Whereas NA, of course, they got to recover here. They got to stabilize a little bit. And they have to try and apply some pressure to Chogal before that bad boy heads into the late game. Two early kills, two early kills is not the way you want to start against your enemy. Or two, two, lo two losses against Sweden. It's not the way you want to start out because they're going to get closer to 16 just ever so faster. Fallen Shaman worked on by the United States as well. I wonder if they're going to let this sit or they're going to insta-cap. They will insta-cap. Feels a little early, but wanting to maybe make a rotation into the enemy side camp. Maybe go for a steal. Nah. Yeah, so down at the bottom, a bit more damage being done. Exploiting the fact that there was nobody here at that point. Whip comes out, doesn't connect. Uh, needs to go into Indiana Jones training camp again before he tries that one. We have half a level ahead. And first objective is up. All right, time to shine. Let's see what they got. Money picks from Grotta, makes his way into the fight. They're still applying pressure onto Chogal, but with Henning in the back and him playing the super safe, there's just no way of taking the big ogre down just yet. And A can, of course, try and go for the objective and really snowball that game, taking down structures and focusing more on the wave player. But Sweden is gonna have a word with them, as it seems. Night Rush putting Swamp got a... Oh, another nap. It's just the nap time composition from United States. Maybe a stun on the Skog from the Immortal Skog, so very low on this Maev. Gets Ooh. a huge heal from Henning, and it's called Ambulance for this Maev. She will fall a trade onto the Orphea. Chogol gonna be Celestial Charged. Li Ming finds the reset. It's a triple kill for USA. Nicely done. Big, big play here from the blue team. For a long time, it seemed that Maev might just survive it. And for a second, even like she yeah. would be the one getting the kill. But then she falls. Chogal is a close second. Three kills to three. 
and maybe even more importantly, a halftime show victory for NA as they can now try to claim their first Immortal of the game. And of course, I don't think Sweden will win this out. What they want to do, reduce that shield on the Immortal that will go over to the side of United States. Alarian will be spawning, I believe, in the top lane since that had no structural damage whatsoever. And Seven's a piece just about here for this siege. That's actually a tiny shield. I expect this to be way bigger considering where we started. So nicely done. Sweden got some really good uh, race down. I, yeah. yeah, I was expecting to be somewhere in the, the 60 percent area. Exactly. 50, 60 percent was what I was looking for too, but no, nope, we're down to 40, 35. So that is definitely manageable. No, but level 7 talents, of course, Liming also has Calamity, so another damage tool she can use to try and get these resets. But let's see how much damage can be done here. The wall should fall at least. I doubt that they can push them past the fort to take the entire thing. Immortal does just north of a thousand damage. The first one typically into structures. This will be our fort front gate falling, as you had said. One maybe attack on the fort, and it will go down. Nice initial pressure from USA. Ten talent here, a level and a half away for both sides. We got sort of chomp build for the Orphea. The big thing I want to note is just that backbiter, giving her a way to back off in case things get a little hairy in these engagements. Yeah, now <clears throat> getting closer and closer to level 10. Top wall has, as expected, already fallen. Gia gets attacked again. Melaganis is such an annoying hero. It's honestly disgusting. I mean, every single time he gets played, the guy has so much mobility, survivability, and then that sleep. It is such a nuisance. Unaverted is doing a great job on him, and he's just such a disruptive character. It's crazy. I also just... It's got to be annoying to deal with the double sleep. Yeah. On a sleep, Malganus sleep, you've got... or So you can almost layer these things. Malganus puts you to sleep, and then Orphea wakes you up. Ana puts you to sleep, and then Li Ming wakes you up. And then now you're down to below 50% because of these large spell power bursts. Just got to go for it. They got Kane double support, and you can go for the full Sandman composition. Ooh, I like that. Opponent never wakes up. Well, I rush on to two. Once again... Setting it up for the team, trying to get a couple of kills here, but the heals are ready. And Henning with great positioning the entire time, so they can never get to him, at least not until now. So he does a great job keeping himself safe, which means that when either Jogal or, or Mayev get targeted here, he's immediately ready to drop those heals. The 10 talent here, faster for Sweden. They want to try and make a fight happen here, but the Sleep Dart creates a barrier or a window for United States to back away. Just noting really quickly, we've had the solo lane Cure and uh, Artana, excuse me, Cure and who was on that? It's Swampgata, excuse me. Uh, they've just been brawling out in bottom lane. No one's been winning. I've been watching the health bars here and there. The health bars have pretty much not moved for either one of them, just soaking, playing. But of course, we're into the immortal phase, Kaldor, and it's race potential for both sides. Who's going to be the victor? I mean, this is going to be party time here. This is the second one. Level 10 abilities are ready, so they are looking for it. It's pretty much a 50 50, not a big change here. 1,700 of a difference. Doesn't really matter too much. It's more so who wins the fight that is pretty inevitable here and who is able oh, to chose, walk away with the other. Chose 10. It's not Twilight Hammer. He's going up people. Sweden's going fishing for North America. Yeah, and they're already getting some extra damage in on the Immortal too, so they're slowly pulling ahead here. Trying to get into decent position for this. Both teams have taken their Shaman Cam, so there's yep. also lane pressure that has to be considered. But yep, Skog is able to get out. Still a bit of poke happening. Yeah, that will maybe not necessarily need it here yeah, at that moment. But it's, low, it's a low cooldown for yeah. the time being. It's not the worst. Artanis is managing bottom lane. Imperius is doing the same thing in top. It's 4v4. Repeated defense finding its fifth of six stacks. It's extra damage for the Ariel. does have that 30% range on the knockback from just picking the talent. But Liam oh. taking so much damage. The spawn through. And Liam goes down. That's a fantastic kill for Sweden. Slum Grotta with a play. They get the kill. Eager saving the day as Imperius engages. But now Shogun is in trouble. Oh. And Gia dies. It's the schoolgirl that takes him down. Nice play by Ophia. And another one as Mayev gets dropped. NA losing Liming initially and then just burning Sweden to the ground, killing three. You've got to be happy with these trades. This is the second time the United States has pulled off this trade. It's a one for three. It's Chogal, but you know we'll count it as three because there's three death timers up on the board. And that's the second objective phase going over to USA. This goes in the bottom lane. That's the more well-defended lane. No shaman camps to deal with. Artanis to top. Looking at Kira in the Hall of Storms. He went back for full mana. I'm assuming he's going to top to defend up against Artanis. Yeah, Sweden losing two objectives in a row. 
Now, we talked about Shogal getting very, very strong as the game progresses, especially towards level 16 with a huge power spike. But they currently uh -oh. just don't have it. They go fishing, as you said earlier, trying to follow up with an additional tether. The combo not quite working out for them. And now Gia finds himself again in a pickle. Aegis has to be used to oh, save the day for no. him, but the focus is there, and Ophia takes him down again. I love Cho Gaul, but I also like seeing NA winning. <laughs> I got nothing from Calder. I just got he just shook his head at me. I don't know what to do with that honestly. Like one of them is gonna lose. I don't know how to break that to you. Mortal pushes through but oh my god, Swamp Grotta almost going down. Good combo over the wall from from Liam, almost taking out Swamp Grotta, but he gets the hearth out, no big deal. And top lane fort will fall as well. All outer layers have been peeled back. Also wanna know we didn't really talk about it. Dark conversion from Malganis as well. Yep. Duck conversion here on his side. Already tried to use it a few times in the last fight and did, so now they have to the camp, they have the talent advantage. With two forts gone, there's obviously a bit of catapult pressure that is now starting to build up against Sweden. And they gotta find the angle here. I mean, again, game is gonna progress a bit, they're gonna scale slightly, but the answer of, yeah, and it was always there. And with the nano boost, and of course, not only Li Ming, but also Ophir just chunking Chogal down, it's really tricky, even with Oriel, to get those heals in. Three levels to go for Chogal to be able to get that critical leaden orb. 16 is that power spike that Sweden is holding on to. But if this goes, if this goes faster, I mean, they have Molten Block now as well. So that's have, true, that's you have, true. You have Aegis, you have Molten Block, you have definitely two, two a few defensives. more... Two defensives, yeah, that's true. few more tools to give Oriel time to get those heal cooldowns back, get those hit points topped off, and just sustain yourself through with a team fight. And if you're going up against the Double Mage, another thing to be considered is also that the damage is very cooldown heavy on the blue team side. So if you live through one of those rotations, it takes a little bit for all of them to get back in a position where they can really chunk you down hard. Does, I, I just honestly don't know off the top of my head, if you go Molten Block, does that stop Eternal Feast? I saw Crystal Aegis obviously stops it because that happened earlier in the team fight, but does Molten Block, does it- Does not go through. So, so well, does it, does it keep the Eternal Feast proccing? No. That's Okay, that's what I was wondering, thank you. They're not getting that, like Eternal Feast is like insanely misnamed in my eyes, by the way. Have yeah, you ever no, seen one that lasts I very long? Like, it's like it's like summertime picnic. It's very short. <laughs> <laughs> the summertime picnic, I like it. Yeah, it's a little bit more like it. That's what it usually looks like. This third objective phase of the game. We're starting to scale up these immortals quite a bit. The winner of this should be dealing somewhere in the ballpark of 1,500 damage into structures. This would be really great for Sweden to be able to push in the lanes. They've got Fallen Shaman in top, but so does North America. I mean, the only way you could set up an Eternal Feast is, I think, with a Gazlo Gravel Bomb into an ETC Mosh Pit into an Eternal Feast. That would probably work out decent -ish. Throw an Entomb in there, why not? Yeah, sure, but we're <laughs> at it. Let's drop a few. But Let's go getting low, speaking of dropping, and they exactly. will throw down the Warden's Cage. The Crystal Legas buys a window. Skog trying to back up. Oh, the oh, upheaval is huge. The Twisting Nether as well. It's a trade onto Maya and Orphea. Yeah, they wanted to go for Ana there too, but they get Orphea at least. Li Ming got the kill on the other hand. They're focusing on Svankrotta right now. He's still alive. There's the Molten Block. Can Shogal get away? And the answer is nope. He gets killed. Level 16 is in another talent advantage for the United States. They take down Oriel, and that is Imperius on a killing spree. 12 kills to 5. Talent lead, level lead. They're doing fantastic here, despite the fact that they just lost the court. At the I think you're fine with that. You take a quadra kill, and you get the first half of this immortal phase. You lose your fort. I take that. 16 talent here advantage. One whole level of experience over the side of Sweden. And we get into the second phase. It's on defensive sides, but still, Chogal just now responding. Ariel up in five. The members of USA will have a very well shielded immortal going into, I believe, the top lane. Yeah, and currently this game is not going Sweden's way. It's like Chogal was a bad pick or something like that. Chogal's never a bad pick. <laughs> Unless you lose, I guess. <laughs> then it's a bad pick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hindsight being 2020 as usual. Always, uh, always. Yeah. yeah. Double camp. Okay, go ahead. Go no, ahead. Sorry. Double camp at the top that is easily going to be defended by NA. So it was mostly that uh, that NA can't pick it up. But Sweden, of course, has to prepare for this push because this is clearly headed for uh, the keep. They're going to try and take this one down. There's a massive shield on the immortal. It's going to hit hard. 
Artanis is at the bottom of the map, which means that Sweden doesn't even have four players here. So he's getting another four at the bottom that gives him value at least. Mm -hmm. But for the defense, it's going to be tricky. He's not... I don't, okay, he did hearth out of bottom. I, I didn't think he was attacking the wave still. But the Immortal will poke at the keep front gate from range so long as that golden swirl or the shielding is available. Once that shield drops, the uh, barrier drops as well, and Alarian will move into melee range. The keep starting to take significant damage. Wait and see how the members of United States will play into this. The poke is good. There's that Leaden Orb Valley I was talking about. You'll see the little stuns here and there off of those. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that pull just doesn't it. work out. Is this going to be... Is this the ending push? No, I don't think so, unless they get a few kills quickly. Instead, it is Imperius that gets attacked. Molten Block activated. Okay, he's getting out of this one too. Aegis to follow up allows for the cooldown to come back for Henning. And the sleep once more. So much. Oh, actually, really nice stun into the wall here Immortals against Sophia. Immortal is going still on the core. They might just be able to pick this off after all. Immortal dropping below 50%. Orphea dancing around. We do have a very low Malganus. He doesn't have Dark Conversion. He's trying to use his Fell Claws. That will be Maev going down. Ladies and gentlemen, Chokeball has been defeated, and North America moves into map number five. Nicely done. NA, they have the victory. And uh, well, I'm happy that we get five maps. I'm super pumped about this. You finally get a five map series. Exactly. You finally I get, get it. My five map series, and I'm totally fine with Sweden taking down an A again with a 3 2 victory. Why wouldn't I be? Oof. I just, I told you that NA said this morning they want the revenge and they will uh, get it. They will for the get it. the final map, so okay, all right, all right. Yes, right, it, is, it is coming so through. So the, they lost the other two maps intentionally. Of course. All right. It's for it's for you. I it's mean, all we, for you. We scripted this well, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Shoe on head when we come back a little bit later. And talking about coming back, obviously we have a short break coming up since some of the players will want to go to the bathroom real quickly, grab some water, or steal another of my Casa Bananas over here. So with that being said, we're going to be back in a little bit, and then it's map number five, the final map in the loser's bracket final. We're going to find out which team is going up against Germany in the best of seven grand final, if it's going to be Sweden or if it's going to be North America. So stay tuned and see you in a bit. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and defeated Chogal champions to Heroes Nations Cup. I asked Lauba. Lauba walked past me and I was just like, dude, what happened? He's like, Gia told us to play Chogal. What, what do you want me to tell you? So well, they Gia's literally... Pl yep. Okay, interesting. I, I, honestly, it's a Don't little Don't not approvingly that lost them the game. They were like, we trusted him and he betrayed us. It backfired. Maybe Gia just wants a game five. Maybe Gia secretly works for NA. That could be the case, too. He's a sleeper agent. But welcome back to Nations Cup. My name is Bahamut, well. joined by Kaldor for the 2023 Nations Cup here yep. in Berlin. We're live in best of five in the lower bracket finals. Loser of this match goes home in third. Winner goes into the grand finals. Best of seven grand finals, unweighted. Germany will have map pick and first pick priority as it's an unweighted best of seven. We could still see eight more maps, including this one that's coming up. And Kaldor, yeah. where are we going to, to round out this best of five? We are going to Dragonshire. Dragonshire is going to be the last map, so heavy macro map as well. And of course, a lot of heroes that are not available anymore since we find ourselves in the fifth and final map here. You know what I thought about, by the way, talking about bribing people and you guys buying off Gia? If you're involved in production, you can do a lot of funny things. We did some light tests a bit earlier, and uh -oh. you could literally just like strobe one of the teams and it's like, okay, listen, guys, here's the, here's the captain's chat, here's my PayPal. Highest offer gets the button once during a team fight. <laughs> that would be glorious. Fantastic. That's how you finance esports. That's how it's done. And then we could also get a sun, uh, we can get a sunglass sponsorship as well for Ooh, the people that I have like to, it. You yeah, it's like a little nice, yeah. nice. There's layers to this. Come on, it's a business model. You can't just yeah. Awesome. We got the idea for the next. I land, like the way right? you're thinking. Must be the hats now. Yeah, you got, and also we could we could put like cool logos on the side and stuff, or maybe get them. I, it, there's the options are endless, but you know what isn't endless? The amount of heroes that we've got. Exactly. Because got that is 89. very limited here in Nations Cup. We got that meta madness style of draft. Four maps have been played. 40 mm. heroes are banned out from those maps. If we go to an A. We can even get a sponsor for, medi uh, for medication against epilepsy. We could, yeah. It's fantastic. Oh my God. We're Jesus, just. So many winning thoughts here. Like, seriously, we are going to completely refinance HTC. It will be back. HTC 2025. We're going to make it happen. As long as I could be a caster, I'm in. It's, it has already <laughs> been clear. But again, Dragonshire starting final map. We had a bang of a series already. It's a 2-2. Chogal just lost as we are jumping into Dragonshire. 
and Zeratul gets banned right away. Great map, of course. You want to have total control here. Globals reign supreme, and guess what? All of them are gone. Most Globals are gone. Also, I just want to note really quickly, this is first pick, first ban for Sweden, meaning that United States were the ones who chose this map. It's, I mean, the map pool at this point probably, what, there's two, three maps available to choose from? I, I, yeah, I'm so actually, with ban bans it, and everything. They ban out and they can still pick here. So in this case, if you go for Dragonshire, it kind of signals you have a bit of a plan. Exactly, that's what course, I'm getting at. There's still a couple of really, really strong heroes out. For example, in the side lane, we have Rexa, who is still playable. You could oh, yeah. technically try and go for a Viking composition. If somebody wants to pull off some Arathar shenanigans, it's still in the cards. There's several things that you can do here if you want to. There's still plenty of heroes in the pool, but we're definitely going to well, we're potentially going to see some out-of-the-box thinking from the players. And I say that with just on the last map, Chogal being played, so yeah. Out of the box, but we will not see Diablo Zeratul. Those are some strong heroes, both sides respecting each other here. Just Lover, no Diablo, no Cure Zeratul. But of course, Abathur continues to be banned away. How will Sweden open up Dragonshire for their first pick? They're really considering this one. There's Pretty much two roles, I think, that you want to focus on. One is tanks, with all of them already banned out. What's left, what you can go for, what doesn't make sense for you. And side lane, we talked a bit about Rexa, but Hogger hasn't been addressed in bans. So far, in every single game, pretty much, he was banned out. So with this time, him going through, he's an insta-pick. That's a little scary, I'm not going to lie, but United States has to know they're letting that through when they choose to ban out Abathur. It's which of the, le which of the two evils do you want to deal with? Hogger in the top lane, Abathur macro around the map. I can't be up too upset about this decision from United States. <laughs> One of the things that I love, by the way, with the crowd shots is that half of them are just like smiling and giggling, waiting for the next pick to happen the same as us because they <laughs> know there's probably some weird shit coming down the road. Because we can do, we can we can sit here and pontificate about all of the different heroes that are available, but what the players are going to do, they've got playbooks that go beyond our knowledge, in my opinion. Malfiel, Alex Straws, I do like this. Has Mephisto hasn't been played? No, Modern no. played it like super early. It was like map one or something. He played it. Did he? I th I swore I did. I thought that was yesterday's map. Uh, no? Wasn't that the map yesterday? There was a there was a Mephisto earlier, but was it with Trick or was it with you? I don't. remember. Everything blends together at this point in these lands. Either way, maybe maybe the uh, maybe the production can whisper in our ears and let us know if they uh, if Mephisto has been played or not. But it would be synergistic, good for United States. That's the reason I want to bring it up because Alex Strauss is a nice additive to, yeah. to him. But well, we got May in, and we have Tyrande. We talked about her earlier, and she was also banned on the previous map, but right now with the ban on Jaina instead. Don't want to go for both of the Ice Queens here, especially if it's a stun into stun into burst damage. And that answers your question. Does. Fisto hasn't been played in this series, so yes, he is banned out too. They're focusing a lot of the majors here as the next double pick is given over to NA. So let's round out the draft a little bit. I do love the Malfiel into Hogger. I think that's that's a really nice th thought from NA. It's like, okay, we have something that can still stick onto Hogger. Ooh, wait, hold on. It's Rexar solo lane or is it Rexar main tank? Hazuab has played Rexar in a four man, but this was back on Volskaya Foundry. Excuse me, me shot me in tank, please. Uh, my apologies. I, I do. That is very rude of me to, to, to say that the man who throws birds out of his pocket is tank. <laughs> <laughs> I never really thought about that, but yeah, that's true too. So, okay, weird factor has gone up by a little bit. Lunara, they love to play her. Actually, it's an A, it is pretty much the team that played most, most Lunara matches. Yeah. They bust out every now and then. There's Vala, and we get Gul'dan for damage. That's a scary draft, I gotta be honest. I love what Sweden put together here. I don't want to say it's a standard draft, but at least the thought behind yeah. the composition is very straightforward. It checks those, you it have checks your those mage, boxes. You have your side laner. And so, yeah, this is looking quite strong for them, especially with the decent Horrify here. It's oh, yeah. It's done, it comes out. And I talked a bit about Henning and his Toranda plays previously. It's one of the reasons why they actually banned Toranda on Battlefield of Eternity Not against even. Sweden. So now he can shine on that hero and really prove that he knows what he's doing on this. As we have a triple front line, so Misha, Malthael, and Sonia is going to be the front line for them. What I look at this with the draft is Malthael's self-sustainability. Alex Straw is obviously a healer. Misha can be healed by Rexar with the, the Mend. 
Uh, Lunara, she has siphoning toxins, but I don't think she's going to be going into that. But also, Sony could go war paint. She also has whirlwind. There's a lot of self sustainability for the side of the United States that I'm really liking here. Of course, there's damage over time. There's Vala with Manticore. Maybe this is auto attack Vala, which is very scary as it scales in the late game. I don't know who I give this over to. I lean NA because I love I love the idea of the NA boys making it to the grand finals. But Sweden, they've got a really stellar draft as well. You said it right. Yeah. It's pretty standard. I mean, from the draft, I have. Have to give it to Sweden. I really like what they do, but there's also a little bit of meta differences. And uh, one thing that an A always has is they have an idea with what they pick, and if that strategy uh, unfolds for them, that could work out. But I really like what uh, what Sweden has right now. I think this exactly. is a very very solid draft, very standard, hits all the boxes as you said earlier, and with good plays on Gul'dan with a nice horrify, a couple of good stuns from Tyrande, you can do a lot here. Well, as we get into Dragonshire, final map of this best of five, winner goes to the grand finals. United States on the left hand side in the blue makes some noise for Cure playing Sonya. Unaverted playing that Rexar. Misha, of course, to be played by Misha. She's got no commander. Liam jumping around on Malthiel. Speaking of jumps, we got Madara playing Lunara. And last but not least, the Dragon Queen to be played by Legacy. And in game number five, Sweden on the right side of the map in red with Svamgrotta on Hoga. Gia playing Gul'dan in game number five. Lauba with May Skook on attack build on Vala getting to rack up those stacks and uh -oh, Henning uh -oh. on to Ronda with the owl to the face right oh, into the GG's. heart of North America. I have a rule of thumb. If you get hit by the owl, you've lost the game. I'm so sorry, NA. Yeah, honestly, with what Sweden has here, I think this is super, super scary. There's so many tools in their arsenal that they can now use to really get these kills in fairly quickly. Especially when we're talking about May controlling this with the slow up the front, then top. you have to run on top of this too. And uh -oh. of course, uh -oh. late game stacking from Vala. Oh, Liam's it's playing bait, safe. baby. Liam's playing it safe. He... <laughs> or not. <laughs> or not. Yeah, I was, like, I was like, he's recognized the bait. No, maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but the allies will rotate into top lane. Hogger gets a. Hogwild out, Misha looking for a charge, but a stagger. No, the Hogwild, or this charge comes through, and First Blood goes over to USA! Well done. It was a ruse all along. It was a double bait right there. I always knew that the end boys were real master baiters, so they get the kill. Nicely done. And Vala, she at least picked up a couple of stacks and didn't die, but of course, that was a nice opening here for the blue team. We have Lunara in that bottom lane. The rest of the team will move back into mid. Malfiel has split off, grabbing the Bruiser camp for his allies. Hogger to do the same thing on the right. Malfiel quite quick on this with his AoE pole of health. And of course, Hogger gets that really short distance bow. And Skog comes in to help speed this up a little bit. As a note, Skog did go in to the... Oh, I blinked on the name, of course. They went to Gambit Stacks, but it's going to be the Creed of the Hunter at level 1. Also to note, Alex Straza went into that... Circle of Life at level 1 Kaldor, and she's already at 7 stacks out of the 15 at a minute 45. That's pretty quick. I love that with other globe talents, and it's more sort of an ARAM thing, but if you have, for example, Stitches in a position where he can capitalize on it with the uh, Hungry for More oh, yeah. level 1, is just so good in the late game. But they have level 4 on uh, Sonya, as you, sorry, on uh, Rexa, as you just pointed out, so that at least helps him to speed this up a bit. And with that dealer now on level 4, Vala again continuing the order attack style build. We'll see if he can keep himself safe here or if eventually he's going to lose some of that order attack speed that he gets through the gambit. Siege Giants cleared out quickly by the side of USA. Now working on that fort front gate in the bottom lane. Kier spearing in. Still have Malthio Liam in the top lane. Managing the bruiser camp while Vala and May just, uh, they say hello to Misha in the rotation. Yeah, a bit of an attack. He's trying to control this with the slowest. The rest of the team is moving what? in, and that might just be a kill on Misha first. Rexa goes down. Job well done. Cure also a bit low, but they can retreat. Even the Dragon Queen pop hasn't helped them. And with the Owl and the potential interrupt at any channel that could have happened in the middle, we're now seeing Sweden take control over the bottom shrine, making sure that there's no early DK being picked up by the United States. Another sentinel towards the top. Does it scout Liam perfectly? Almost. 
just about either way checking on the camps really quickly we have everything taken right now and i think we're setting up for another brawl in the top lane this is not usually where all the brawls happen it's usually down and bottom but we're having constant rotations to top liam's in a particularly bad spot can cure get in here in time absolutely with the help of Le uh, with legacy swamp grata tries to spin but he's going down scope will lose one stack of gambit down to 20 Percent. That's a pretty sexy double kill. I mean, this is the second time that they went for Malthale. He kept himself alive long enough for the rotation to arrive. Was saved then by Alex Straza, and it resulted in Sweden losing too. So every time they are ganking up on Liam, it results in kills against them. Clearly an A communicating exceptionally well whenever these rotations happen. Dragonite grabbed by Brandon here. We'll have unaverted inside of that. Rex Armisha starting to siege through the mid, but let's take a look back at this moment. Yeah, so up at the top, Liam, again, he's just buying time and time and time. Even with the stun here, the rotation comes in. Legacy once again with stellar play. He's the backbone of the team for sure, keeping them alive. And then Swam Grota trying to spin out. That's not working. Vala is all alone. Lauba can't do anything about it, so he has to watch Vala fall. Nicely done. And Mel, maybe now a kill. Finally getting Liam. And that is also the first quest reward for Vala. 50th stack for her. She'll have that 1% increase. And Dragonite continues to siege through top lane, taking down the fort front gate, or some of it, as Unaverted uses a nice charge through Swamp Grata, getting away from that staggering blow. Still will get the blow against the trash, but no big deal. No losses beyond the singular kill into Malthiel. Now, Scott can also start to use Misha a little bit as a pincushion to just pat his stats and also make sure that he is getting those level 1 stacks that will help him to increase his damage output in the later stages. Equal experience. Level 9 has started to drop in a sliver of XP ahead. Uh, with that level 7, of course, now also Vala just continuing that build, especially on level 20. We're going to see a huge boost for her if she is able to keep at least some of the stacks alive. And of course, Manticore on level 16. Yeah. I mean, once you have that, then the front line is really suffering if you're able to get the shots through. Just win before 16, basically. It's easy on Dragon Shire. It's not a map that goes late ever. <laughs> so we have bottom lane siege continues though for the side of United States. Malthia working on the top lane. We have Sonia still opening up mid lane. Vala will meet up with her. Kier gonna take a bit of damage here, getting a few stacks. Leap turn around into the follow with Amisha charge. Good night. Easy kill, easy game. Vala down and an A picks up kill number four. Yeah, job well done, and that was a big one. That is 10% of the attack speed bonus through the Gambit talent on level 1. Already gone. Very important kill for North America. Is definitely thrown a little bit of a wrench into the plans of uh, Sweden here, as the damage output of Vala will be significantly reduced. You really want to maintain that attack speed. It's so important when you have Manticore. It's not even that important that you get big stacks on your level 1 talent. Just keeping the attack speed should be the priority for you. You always want to, of course, get some stacks on level 1, but don't go too deep because you feel the need to get the things there. You want to have the attack speed in combo with Manticore, and with two deaths against Vala, that's already a significant reduction in that. Malthiel is channel onto the Sunshine Moonshrine, hold, held by Brandon, and Sony's already in position. I don't think Hogger gets there in time. That's another Dragonite to the side of USA. Gotta compliment Cure on the way that they played that initiation into Vala. He was like, oh, I'm just backing off. No, I've gotta leap into your face with the Misha charge in there as well. But the Dragonite works on mid lane. Liam clearing the camp and pushing up top with a camp of their own, and the rest of USA works on bottom lane. Ah, <laughs> oh, nice bait by Scope. Well done by Vala. Dragonite not able to connect that kick. The fort falls. So this is DK number two. More objectives for North America. And we have the United States now with the first fort destroyed. Sweden has lost one structure. They're trying to go for Liam again. Okay. And this time they get him. No rotation of the blue team is going to be fast enough to assist him in this particular scenario. So why not just go for a bottom lane fort for free at this point? The enemy team is all the way in top. Unfortunately, actually, the rotation was a lot faster than I thought. And the fort takes a wee bit of damage in the bottom lane. Sweden losing one structure, but finding a kill into Malthiel, bolstering their experience, trying to close that gap as 13 will be hit by United States in just but a moment. Yeah, they got a half level lead. The question is always, can they do something with it? There's not really a whole lot up on the map that they could focus on. Of course, now we have also Sonia still sitting there at the side. Anybody that goes a little bit too deep would be immediately met by a quick stun. 
But Sweden is rotating. They're rotating towards the bottom of the map where their fort has also taken damage. There is only one Siege Giant camp up, so immediately the USA is trying to sneak it away. But level 13 is ready for Sweden as well Huge. as the fight is always starting. There's the Horrify. Misha gone. Can they get more? They want to go for Kyo. He has to jump out and dust. Hoga on his heels. Lunara jumping around. Kyo with a spin to win, but it is Rexa that falls first. And the chase is still on. Cure wants the slam splash. It doesn't work out. And another loss for the side of the United States. A beautiful Horrify has initiated what is a triple kill for Sweden. Can they make it a quadra kill? Absolutely. Sweden saying, this is our house. Get out, USA. Easy peasy. Three kills, four kills. They take them all, seven in total, and they have the leading experience now. The pressure through the bottom of the map as Gia is moving in with Gul'dan. One fell flame at a time, burning down those towers. They're trying to take control of the game. Hoga at the top and Vala in the middle. They're hitting them on three lanes simultaneously, just breaking through these gates. Absolutely love the way that Sweden played that afterwards. Get a couple kills, spread out across the map, try and find as much value as possible. Do got to point out the Abolish Magic for Lunar is a great pickup, but of course, that Harsh Moonlight for Taranda is so annoying to deal with. Movement speed is also going to be reduced by that. I believe your damage output is reduced by 35% as well. So a nice turnaround moment for the side of Sweden. Can they keep this? Can they? Sh they've shifted the momentum. Can they keep it going for themselves? Sweden would love to have level 16 here. They're half a level yeah. away from it. So if they can just delay this a bit, Problem is that North America uh -oh. is aggressively pushing for another Dragonite, and you don't want to let that happen. There's the stun, the follow-up. Q are forced to jump out of the fight again. He escapes. Nicely done. A lot of cooldowns burned from both sides, but the seed seed chain was just not strong enough to pin Q down. Camp on the left side grabbed by the side of... Uh, camp on the left grabbed by United States. A little bit of a lull in our game right now. People backing off, waiting for 16 talents here, playing it safe, slow. Malfi will be delayed out for the Dragonite by a Toronto Sentinel, which gives Hogger enough time to get the channel on top. What? And I he thought Hogger was up there first! Yeah, they thought so too. But, well, there it is. So, Third 16 Dragonite. is in. Another Dragonite, and that is number three. Is he dead? Nah, he got the spin in time, no Misha charge stun, but this top lane fort should fall. Alexstrasza, Cleansing Flame has been utilized. Yep, this is going to be another fort. So Sweden, they thought they had it, but they didn't. And now the Dragonite takes down another fort with the help of the blue team. They're doing fantastic here. They already have a mercenary camp. Aura is still up and they can now rotate over towards the middle, towards the bottom, trying to take these walls down, maybe prep the bot lane a bit too. Just use that Dragon's Breath whenever you can. GS Gul'dan gets a bit of an ass kicking here, but the Dragonite is trying out for the NBA. Uh, the uh, the yeah. pun team, not NBA. NFL. NFL, thank you. Mm -hmm. Too many acronyms. You guys love acronyms. Oh, I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> NHL, NBA, NF and then and then you get like XFL. They start just making up a random things at this we point. We discussed this yesterday. You know one of the things that people are going to hate me for in the US? I think that when you watch the NBA, the first 70% are insanely boring and totally useless. Oh, yeah, we you talked tune about in for the last yeah. 10 minutes, and that's all that you need to watch. Like, whoever talked about the best 10 minutes, the best first 10 minutes ever? There's going to be someone in Twitch chat like, well, you know, in 1997, Larry Bird was pretty good. Ooh. I don't know, he's some basketball player. I just threw out a name. So we have 16s apiece on both sides. I know sides. Jordan, so that's about it. There you go. Maybe Jordan has a good start on a, in an NBA game. But we wait for another Dragonite phase. The, the time from when the Dragonite falls to when we get another... Jeho would hate me at this point. <laughs> You know what? He's already he's already typing a Reddit thread. He's like, well, I tuned into Nations Cup and they were talking about basketball. They don't know what they're talking about. And he's right. <laughs> also, that guy tells everyone he's super tall. He's actually not. He's shorter than uh, Haloran. Did you know that? He's actually really short, Jay Howe. He stands in all the photos. People kneel down. He around. stands on a box. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's got yeah. a lot of apple crates carrying around. Lobber will <laughs> drop to 50 percent. <laughs> I think I, I think I hit a little bit of a sore spot here, but yeah, either what? way, what NA is currently hitting is the Swedish team because they are going for another kill. They want Lauber. They're trying to get the stun with Misha, but it's not happening before the red team enters the bridge of death. And well, let's just say that the blue team isn't really willing to follow them here. 
They were also just at the top side with only four heroes. Lunara pushing the bot lane out a little bit. So, yeah. That's, good approach. Good, a, good attempt, but it didn't really work out. A I kill would have been great for them. I do love the pull towards top lane from USA. Sweden responding, but that gave the opportunity for Madara on the Lunara to find a little bit more pressure through bottom. A level and a half to go for both teams. Four to seven, or excuse me, a level and a half for both teams to get to level 20. Four to seven in our kills. And it's Dragonite phase up and available. Liam's already on the point. He leaves a touch too early. That's no big deal, realistically. Madara should have the channel on bottom, but the delay... I expect to come through from mid. Sweden should be able to delay out this Dragonite phase unless they're playing scared. Wait, why is Sweden just eating this? Yeah, I am not so sure yet either. I'm a little bit confused myself. I'm just looking at the experience gap. It's not quite there. Yeah, like they what? give the Dragonite up. That is the fourth one. It's just uh, like Sweden's like, what is an objective? Why do we need Did that? Did Lobber forget the objective was on the map? Like he forgot about the Headless Horseman on Towers of Doom? It seems like they don't want to fight before they have level 20? That's a possibility. Or maybe they let the Dragonite come in, it allows Vala to build up a bunch of free stacks potentially off of it, but you're then just trading... You're I mean, getting Vala stacks for losing structures. That, the, I don't like that trade. They should be able to really take the Dragonite out. I don't think it gets the keep. So no, only, I don't either. The only explanation that I have is that they really feel more comfortable with level 20 and think that their Storm Talents are just better. Okay. We'll see how that all works out. We have very close level 20s. Hogger trying to find a bit of displacement on Liam just above us while Lobber gets kicked away. Dragonite down to 40%, 30 seconds left on that. We got Amisha charging onto Gia, and he's fine for the time being. Another Flame Belch onto the bottom lane keep with 20 talent here trickling in for USA. And they're going to get level 20 any moment now. Hogger is still at the top trying to get some experience for Sweden. So they're getting closer and closer here as well. DK is gone. Again, they got good tools against it. And immediately the full focus on Zukio, who drops to half HP, needs to be healed up. Survives, of course, through all of it, but became very quickly the punching ball of Sweden as they now have level 20 abilities and immediately start to posture a bit more aggressively on the map. Farflight Quiver, the Haunt, no control. You got the Shatter for armor reduction. Do you want to point out that you have that uh, Deep Flame, I think it is? The, no, excuse me, on Ruby Wings for the Alexstrasza. If you hit eight enemies or eight allies with your Cleansing Flames, you drop down as a Dragon Queen for 15 seconds when you re return upon the ground. So we'll see how Legacy is able to utilize that. But it's 20s apiece, and Sweden starts pushing up bottom lane while Nara is splitting in top. I mean, look at how aggressive they are now that they have yeah. level 20. They really, really like this a lot more. You have Vala in a position with Farflight Quiver. She has a lot bigger distance. She can stay in the back here. Attacks keep coming. Here come the boars unleashed already. The jump, the leap, and Taranda is dead. The counter kill on Lunara. Oh dear, she's down. And we got Malthel also popped as the Ice Wall locks down the next target. Rexa with a feign death. Nobody's going to believe that anymore. And down he goes. Five! more kills, sorry, 10 to 5 kills, and in this case, two more for Sweden, as Sonia is hoping for pressure topside to force Sweden to hearth. Sonia shows and immediately leaves. Might have been a shot call from the Allies saying, it's not worth it, let's get out of here, save what we can, do not stagger any more deaths. Liam did use the buyback at level 20, no one can stop death, so he has to stay alive for the next 180 seconds or less, so he doesn't have that 80 second death timer. But this late game, Manticore Vala with Farflight Quiver. Fun fact, Vala at max hatred outranges all structures and towers. Towers have a 7.8 range, keeps forts and the core have an 8 range. Farflight Quiver at max is like 8.23. It's really weird, but it's 8.2 and that's just enough for Vala to be out of range and siege perfectly. And she gets decent damage in here. We have a 39,000 that keeps her at the top damage number, followed by Gul'dan who's sitting at 37k. So, in this case, they are much more comfortable now getting that damage out and really entering the map for team fights. They've only gotten a single fort even after they killed a few heroes on the blue team side. But it definitely made sure that NA pays attention, that uh, the US is currently a bit cautious about how they approach this. A lot really hinges on the engage that we're seeing from Q, and he had so many good leaps already. Yeah. If they can take down Taranda again, maybe drop Gul'dan or Vala, that would be a great start into the fight for them. When we were looking at some of the damage stats, I was taking a look at the side of USA, and it was Cure with the lead of like 27,000 roughly in heroic damage, Lunar with 21,000. Cure leading the damage on his team with a Sonya, 
You like to see it, honestly, yeah. as this bottom lane siege is fantastic uh -huh. for Sweden. As I mentioned, Vala outranges structure. She sits there and she's like a little sergeant hammer. Yeah, it's, Gia is also pretty disgusting with his damage on Gul'dan right now. It forced Malthel back. He was initially sitting topside, but the fight could very well still happen here. They're just sieging this up over and over again, and you can tell that the US is a bit of an awkward spot here. They don't like this at all. Topside is still getting pressured by the mercenary camp, so there's That's a it. fort that could fall. Mid has two cat, well, one catapult on the keep and one more arriving, so this is a little bit of value for USA. As Sweden tries to back away, Vala picking up her 200th stack on the Creed of the Hunter. Still another 100 stacks she can grab on that. Max is 300. And cleansing Flame out enough to keep the Misha alive. But what Legacy wants is those hits to drop down in Dragon Queen. He'll do that. Last Rites will take down the Mei. That's a trade you want. But Malthiel goes down. His death timer's 80 seconds. Madara, the no control doesn't take him out. Galloping Gank gets him out of there. Potentially Gia. No, he won't throw a Felt Flame over the wall. Oh, Legacy, slow, the damage. It, it, Dragon. It's so small. Legacy is shredded. That's on a verdict going down. Boy. Oh no, Calder, you don't like to see it. Well, I do. Alex Straza is down, so is Rexa. Sweden murdering once again and now sieging up easily on that bottom keep. What a fight. Mid keep on Sweden's side is about to fall too. Just got destroyed by the catapults here. But it's, of course, all about the push at the bottom of the map as Sweden is trying to go for the core here to make this a 3 2 victory. They want the same result they got in the winner bracket. United States, they were looking for the rematch, but it seems like maybe here on map number five, they will be bested once again. It all depends on the two that have to come back to help with the defense on Alex Straza and on Rexa. They've held for 20, only 20 more to go. Catapults took down that keep, as you noted, and have made it to core. May just now respawning. She'll take care of that. It's going to, you'll see some core scratching. That's a wee bit. That's all it. I am yeah. really, what? <sighs> I would have thought that Sweden was trying to siege up on the core a bit at least, and they didn't. Now, I can understand why. You have Leap and Last Rites plus Lunara against you. As long as they stay out of your range, they can collapse on a target and try and get a quick kill. But the problem is that your bot lane is under pressure. You lost the keep in the middle. If you don't pay attention, you will lose the keep at the top side too. So either Hogger has to move there and now yeah, take the minions down, especially the catapults, the camp as well. But... This is not... It, it looked over for a second, but I, it definitely I isn't. I didn't think it was going to go right there. I thought Sweden was going to rush at the core, take it down. It was 3v4 in the defense, but Sweden still had their Vala with Firefly Quiver and the Manticore. Huge yeah. chunking damage, but of course, Abolish Magic. Abolish Magic, Madara level 13, take away all the damage over time and disabling effects to an ally. They haven't actually taken the bottom shine either, so it's a double control now for USA. And whew, that top keep is going to fall. Sweden is losing more and more ground here. There's a mercenary camp. There's a little bit of a chase happening down at the bottom. Everybody's still positioning. But the US is in a really good spot here. They're applying lane pressure. The macro game is just in their favor. And that's something that I more so expected from Sweden. But Sweden is struggling with this. They lost the keep in the middle and they cannot afford to lose the one at the top too. Vala drops a quick puncturing arrow into the top lane. Ooh, Lunara. no, not one. Oh my god. Ooh, I know exactly. Right? Like that, it's. I mean, look. I was at like, this. why did we rotate to hit a Q and then run away? But it might have been one of those shot calling things, like go yeah. to the top and then wait, no, come back. I mean, they need to stay at five, but they gave this up, so they definitely made a decision. I just don't think that this was necessarily the right one, because there's still forts on uh, the mid and top lane yep. for NA, which means that na right now it's going to be continuous catapults with no matching or any periodic. <laughs> they want to set up a push, maybe even at the bottom of them. Oh, Lunara. <laughs> Yeah, careful, yeah. If she... If she had Madara Wisp falls. Bush. She had Wisp and Bush. She yeah, was she okay, had. I, I think. I, I think she was okay. <laughs> I'm confident for the NA players for them. Or I'm trying to be, at least. A lot of pressure still mounting in that top, as you had mentioned. Consistent catapults through mid and top now as those two keeps have fallen. Misha will hold control of the Moon Shrine while Lobber gains control of the Sun Shrine in the top. This is a spicy finish. This I mean, is tense. Like I, I'm just, I'm almost, I'm, my face is almost mashed into the monitor. I don't want to miss a single thing here. It's just amazing that two keeps were destroyed just by catapults alone, right? and Sweden didn't react to that in time. Normally, it's the European teams where you say, okay, they're looking very much so towards the macro game, but here with the defense at the bot lane set up. The USA wasted so much time of the Swedish players and just didn't allow them to get into a position where they defended their keeps. And now it's again double control on the Shrine. 
for the blue team. They're threatening the yeah. middle again. I just, every time I look at someone looking at going for Madara, I just keep reminding, reminding myself, they have galloping gain. It's an 80% increase for six seconds. Whoa, a lot of damage to Misha, and she will go down. Not the worst. It's a 24 second death timer for the bear as Liam. Once again, pushes up top lane a little bit faster, forcing those catapults onto core. And we're at 23 minutes. Those catapults dealing upwards of 700 damage to structures. These are some beefy catapults. Sweden has to eventually make a play for at least the forts in the middle and top lane. If you want to release some of that lane pressure, at least that's top. What you at do. least top, because it's so whittled down already. Run up there, take it down, run away sort of deal. I mean, ideally, of course, you force a team fight and you make the decision happen there, but yeah. you are in the long run going to lose this because these catapults hit too much and they are going for it. They are realizing that they can't play this long run. Lunara is going game. for it too. Lunara no, no, will go harthing. for it. She's it's going to result. No, she's like, yeah, you're right. She's halfing. She only keeps the catapults there yep. because Sweden is making a move now. Sweden is just saying, guys, we got to go for it. We got to do whatever we can and see if we can win the game here. They jump into the back to Ronda. Bye bye. That is the end of Henning in the team fight. Cure jump. Jumped in deep, the last rights got the kill. Now we got the Dragon Queen. Gia gets destroyed as well. And this is an utter disaster for Sweden. The US is looking fantastic here. They forced this decision. They forced Sweden to make a choice and go for a bit of a Hail Mary move towards the bottom and punish them as they did. Catapults arrived to core on the side of Sweden, but it's okay. It's okay. Hogger got the hearth out. No delay from Misha, and there was a little bit of scratching. Liam's in position for this 24-minute Dragonite. It is going to slap so very hard into structures, and they're walking down mid lane. United States is moving to take map number five. United States is moving to take the revenge from yesterday and put themselves into that grand finals Best of seven up against Germany. But of course, the core has to fall before any of that can be said. What will fall is Lauber first. Liam on core. Shielding is gone. No control is an attempt here from Hogger. Cure very low will go down, but the Dragonite's got slaps. Legacies here. Madara as well. And GG's USA takes map three. Nice done. Well played. That was such a good series. The biggest play here, really the macro. Uh, there were so many like weird and awkward moments where it, uh, letting the Dragonite go, yes. that, that made a little bit sense to me because you could really tell they were waiting for level 20. Yeah. It wasn't so much about position on the map. They had enough vision that they knew that they could push in, contest it, and fight. They decided to wait for level 20 because they just said, okay, our level 20s are much stronger. We need those tools, and then we can force anything. And once they had level 20, they actually won two team fights. Mm -hmm. They got a couple of kills. They started to push them out, took one fort down. But either you have to really commit at that point to the bot lane push and push it all the way through the core, or you have to fall back and save your keeps. And once they lost the keep in the middle and the keep at the top, they were in this really awkward position where catapults were threatening them every single time and A danced around not only the dragon statue, but also the shrines. And eventually they realized, guys, if this continues another three minutes, we're going to lose the game to catapults. So we have one choice. Either we dance around them, risk that they just don't give us a fight, or we go for the battle at the bottom. And of course, North America knows that, waits for it, and then they punish them immediately with Cure and his leap and yeah. then Malthale and his last rides. It was really good patience from USA as well. I think that's the big factor. They were really patient. They didn't overstep in a lot of moments. They took a lot of tools. I mentioned the galloping gain as well. They took tools where they could save themselves. Feign death, it's pretty, it's pretty common for Rexars, but there's other talents at level 13 that you can be going for auto attack speed as well. So I like the feign death. They take these safety talents, and overall, United States with a slow play, a methodical at times as well, and they just nailed down this map. My heart goes out to, to Sweden as well. They're, they played fantastic in the series. They're five phenomenal Heroes of Storm players. Kudos to them in their run here in Nations Cup. But as I mentioned, that is going to be Germany versus USA in the best of seven grand finals. I had such a blast with this series, Kaldor. I had such a blast casting here because this was my last cast for Nations Cup. I'll be able to join the crowd up next. And I just want to say thank you to you. Thank you to Kevin. Thank you to everyone here. And just thanks to everyone in the community for, for welcoming me for my first LAN event. I well, just thanks to you and thanks for all the online casting you do and for keeping an A alive.
appreciate it. And hopefully we get more of these in the future with your support. Yep, and talking about what you can do, we have something where you can vote. So we have an MVP award coming up. Oh, we asked nice. all the teams who they think is the MVP of the tournament. So the teams were obviously not able to vote for a player on their own team, but we put together the top four. There is a poll going on right now on Twitter. If you use exclamation mark MVP in the chat, you're going to get a link and you can participate in the poll. We're going to crown the MVP throughout the grand final, so make sure that you check that one out. And talking about the grand final, we're going to have a bit of a break. Obviously, North America has been playing a lot of maps right now. Eight so maps back to back to back. need a short break to uh, get some food in, to get a bit of rest. Germany needs time to set up on the stage. And then we're jumping into the best of seven grand final. What do you think? How is it, how is it going to go? Do you think NA is going to go all the way? Do you think they're going to be too exhausted after playing the entire day on stage? I think NA's got a fire lit in their heart that they want to take this. Of course, Germany's a monster of... They haven't dropped a single map. Yes. And Germany has not looked weak in any of their maps at all. That's the other factor, too. They haven't dropped a map, nor have they looked weak at any time. I definitely feel like NA can take some maps off them, but I am leaning a little bit Germany. They're just so strong. I'm going to be rooting in the crowd for NA, but I also think Germany, they are a dominant force here in Nations Cup. The one thing that you have to make sure you can never count out North America, no matter how far behind they are, you give them one opportunity, they will turn the game around, they will punish you, and they will kill you. We're going to go into a short break, guys. When we are back, it will be the grand final of the Nations Cup. See you in a couple of minutes with Germany against the USA.